Paul Goldschmidt and the St. Louis Cardinals have been pushed to the brink of elimination after the Atlanta Braves with a snatch em back win yesterday. Dansby Swanson, a big part of that. And now Atlanta, a chance to punch their ticket to the NLCS for the first time in 18 years. The 2019 National League Division Series is presented by Utz, the Atlanta Braves, and the St. Louis Cardinals. We're ready for game four with the Braves leading two games to one. And hi, everybody. We welcome you on a picture perfect afternoon in St. Louis, Missouri. Great to have you with us. Brian Anderson along with Ron Darling. We'll hear from Lauren Shahadi in just a moment. This has been a terrific series. I mean, old school kind of baseball with great pitching, some late rallies. And Ron, the Braves, the most prolific late game offense in the major leagues this year. They have continued that in the postseason. They really have all season been a never say die kind of offense. And if you've watched the last couple of games, they have been unbelievable. Adam Duvall, of course, the big two run home run to extend that lead to three nothing. But there were a lot of heroes last night. Donaldson with the initial hit. And then after Brian McCann was intentionally walked, Dansby Swanson with the tying hit. And then Adam Duvall for the second day game in a row drives in the second and third run and gets Atlanta the victory. Well, the Atlanta Braves with Duvall's four RBIs continue to score runs late. Ten of their 12 runs have come in the sixth inning or later. High batting average, a lot of damage, a lot of traffic on the bases as well. So the Cardinals offense has not been good. They've scored one run in the last 18 innings and they are going to draw the game one starter for the Braves today. That is Dallas Keuchel. His mound opponent will be making his postseason debut for the Cardinals, 25-year-old Dakota Hudson. Just turned 25 years old but won 16 ball games this year, nine in the second half. He was 5-0 and at home here in St. Louis in the last couple of months. He's got to get the job done. And Dallas Keuchel has pitched on three days rest in the postseason before. The result of that in the 2015 wildcard, six shutout innings. There was a decision to be made. Dallas Keuchel for game four, Julio Tehran, who they added late. They go with Keuchel, their game one starter. And for more on that decision, we check in with Lauren Shahadi. Good afternoon, Lauren. Good afternoon, B.A. Brian Snicker was asked after last night's dramatic win, who will be your game four starter? He laughed. He said, I'm going to need a moment to process this one first. Name Dallas their guy today. Why? This is why they got him. The moment won't be too big, the slow heartbeat. He also said, I always feel like we're one ground ball away from getting out of trouble, and I love that. Mike Schilt's message very clear. We need to keep him elevated. We cannot chase. We can't miss on the pitches he gives us because he's not going to give us many. 74 pitches in game one, B.A., only 25 in the strike zone. And those 74 pitches, why Brian Sinker thinks he's ready, more than ready, and rested for this game four start. We're ready to play ball. The Braves a chance to head to the NLCS. The Cardinals are trying to force this series back to Atlanta for a game five. Lineups, first pitch. Game four is next. We have the meats by Medicare Options from Blue Cross and Blue Shield companies. And by Coca-Cola. Share a Coke this season with friends, family, and maybe even a rival. Oh, a touch of fall in the air, the gateway to the West St. Louis, Missouri. It is beautiful here today. 70 degrees, hardly any breeze at all. This ballpark played big yesterday. A lot of long fly ball outs at the warning track or near the wall. And a sea of red. It'll be a sellout crowd on a Monday afternoon. And this St. Louis fan base hoping the Cardinals can stay alive for one more day. And if they do stay alive, if the Cardinals do force the Braves back to Atlanta for game five, St. Louis has Jack Flaherty, their ace, on the mound in game five on Wednesday. Dakota Hudson leads the Cardinals out onto the field. And Ronald Acuna Jr. ready to lead the way. Let's give you the rest of the Atlanta Braves starting lineup, Ronnie. It's Acuna Jr., Ozzie Albies, and Freddie Freeman at the top. 
In the middle, Josh Donaldson, Nick Markakis, and Matt Joyce. Brian McCann, Dansby Swanson, and Dallas Keuchel. If those names sound familiar, all four games, position players, the same for Brian Snitker, and that's the lineup that's going to face Dakota Hudson. Well, first, the good news about Dakota is last six home starts, he's 5-0, and ERA 1.41, only has allowed three home runs in his last 61 innings pitch. The only negative, 86 walks this year, which led the National League. Defensively, you're always going to have the great and future Hall of Famer Yadier Molina behind the plate, working with Hudson. In the infield, very strong up the middle with the Young and Wong. Carpenter, maybe the only liability in the infield at third base. And in the outfield, Dexter Fowler, Edmund, and Ozuna. Well, Mike Schild is entering offense into the picture, sacrificing defense. Mm -hmm. With Matt Carpenter, that moves Edmund out to right field. So Harrison Bader, a superior defender, is out. And with a pitcher in Dakota Hudson, Ron, who is a ground ball pitcher, sinker slider pitcher, figures to be a lot of balls put in play. That could be big. You mentioned it with Matt Carpenter, but we'll see ground balls on the left side of that infield here today. When you have Edmund playing in the infield, he's got a good arm. He can play deep. Carpenter does not have as strong of arm, so he'll have to play in a little closer. Braves are fighting some history here today. They have their first series lead in the postseason since the 2002 NLDS. And, of course, it has been 18 years since they have advanced in a series. They have not won a series going back to the 2001 season. Ronald Acuna Jr. will lead off. And we are ready to play ball here on a Monday afternoon game four Dakota Hudson he deals and Acuna swings and fouls it away and away we go I think Acuna Jr. with probably George Springer of the Houston Astros the most prolific leadoff hitters in the game most dynamic leadoff hitters in the game he's had a good series thus far he's four for 11 in the series with a couple of doubles hit a ninth inning home run in game one that was the Cardinal win there's a slow roller and this is going to go for a base hit no chance to get Acuna and it'll be an infield single to start this game so Acuna Jr. now has had 15 plate appearances he's been on base eight times five hits now in the series and the Braves have a man on to start it for Ozzy Albies Scoring first would certainly be among the menu of things that Brian Snitker would like to accomplish here today. That's always the case, but especially when you have a team on the road, on the ropes. Mm. And that's what they have in the Cardinals here today. Atlanta has lost five consecutive potential clinching games in the postseason. So while many of these players don't know much about that, and a lot of them are new to the mix. They certainly understand the history of the Atlanta Braves, specifically with the Cardinals. This is the fifth postseason series between the Braves and the Cardinals, and Atlanta's only advanced once. Ozzy Albies on the first pitch, a fly ball foul into the seats. So they got some early swings in the first two batters. Well, with Hudson, you're going to hit a lot of ground balls. We saw the infield hit from Acuna Jr. What you have to do just like the Cardinals are going to have to do against Dallas Keuchel. Raise your sights. Get him up in the strike zone if you can. Acuna has speed, but not many run on Yadier Molina. And the combination of Dakota Hudson and Molina, good one. Hudson does a good job holding runners, controlling the running game, as most ground ball pitchers do, sinker slider pitchers. This figures to be a game with the ball in play, as I mentioned. And we saw that with Keuchel in his game one start. He did not get through five. Hudson is making his postseason debut here this afternoon. 174 and two-thirds innings this year. Only 136 strikeouts for Hudson. No balls and two strikes on Ozzy Albies. Acuna ready to run at first base. The long pause. And mm. finally, Albies calls timeout. Both pitchers put the ball on the ground. Dallas Keuchel, 60% ground ball rate. That's number one in Major League Baseball. Dakota Hudson, number two in all of baseball. 57.5% ground ball percentage. 
Albie's a tough guy to double up if he does hit one on the ground, and that one's off his foot. You'll see a lot of that today as well. Just hit it right off the top of that front foot. Got a little bit of ankle there, too. Nice sportsmanship here by Molina. Picked up the bat for Albies. And the home plate umpire Jim Wolf giving him a little extra time to recover. Dusting off home plate. Now the athletic trainer is out. Just want to make sure Albies, who is still limping. You see Ron Washington is close in there. They've got like a father son relationship. Says he's good to go. And we'll pick it up. 0 oh, 2 the count on Albies. Albies hit 24 home runs during the regular season, drove in 86. He hit 295 as well, and led the National League in hits this year with 189. Put up gaudy numbers. And he rolls over that one, a foul ball. Count remains at no balls and two strikes. This can sometimes be a mean game. What do you do after a guy's fouled the ball off his foot? Go right back down in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, see if he can elevate his swing a little bit, at least have him thinking that way. It's been a terrific top four in the batting order for Brian Snitka with the Braves. May 10th was the date, demarcation date for Atlanta's offense. That's when he put Acuna in the leadoff spot. A little bit later in the summer, Albies moved into the number two spot. And they have been clicking ever since. Kind of hovering around 500, actually under 500 at one point. But the top four in this batting order mm -hmm. deserve all the recognition they get. Acuna, Albies, Freeman, Donaldson, youth, power, speed, plate discipline, all of it. It can be a bear to get through if you're a starting pitcher. The one two pitch Albies out to short DeYoung flips the second jump throw the first not in time. Nice play by DeYoung to Wong and the first out of the ball game for the St. Louis Cardinals. That'll be a fielder's choice for Albies 6 4 on the put out. Well it's nothing better than watching DeYoung and Wong try to turn this double play such an athletic move by Wong. Interesting in that play that after getting thrown out in game number one Acuna Jr.'s running game seems to be shut down by Yadier Molina. Yep, No question that goes for all of the Braves mm. not wanting to challenge Molina. He threw out Acuna in the very first inning of game one. And that's been it like a shutdown cornerback. So runner on one out. Here's Freddie Freeman now. Freeman is 0 for 7 since he hit a booming home run in game one. That was a ninth inning home run into the fountain at SunTrust Park. Longest home run of the series by far. Freeman's been a struggling hitter. He is dealing with elbow pain that really saddled him in the final month of the year. Bone spurs that have just popped up. He said he's dealt with it before. But we thought maybe with that home run in game one mm. the power was back but it seems to be affecting him more uh, than we thought it would be following that big blast get to watch him on a regular basis he just doesn't swing and miss very often like he has in this series last 47 at bats going back into the regular season just six hits and just the one home run that's a shot off the foot of Hudson flip to second Wong's got time here and the Cardinals will turn a double play with the kick save by the pitcher Dakota Hudson put him on the book one six four three double play in the inning. Off Colton Wong then Paul Goldschmidt. In the middle, the red hot Marcelo Zuna. He'll be followed by Yadier Molina, then Matt Carpenter, Tommy Edmond, Paul DeYoung, and Dakota Hudson will round out the starting nine. That will face Dallas Keuchel, his second start of this division series. 
First ball swinging. Albies, what a play. Spins and throws out Fowler. And the Cardinals aggressive on the first pitch as Fowler bounces out 4-3. Excellent play. Yeah, good at bat by Fowler. Better defensive play by Albies. Didn't give us a chance to talk about the Cardinals at the top of the order. We've seen spectacular defense this entire series. Albies caught that in the middle of his glove, not in the webbing, but still makes the play. Cardinals have Fowler and Wong in the top two spots in the batting order. They have Carpenter in the lineup today with Edmund in right field. So they're trying to insert a little more offense. Ah! They've scored one run in the last 18 innings, and the top two batters in the order run in the last two games yeah. for the Cardinals 0 for 17 now. Thirty one year old Dallas Keiko he's done this before you referenced it as we hit the yes. air today he had a lot of success coming back on three days rest Yeah, in the 2015 wild card game against the Yankees six shutout innings just went four and two thirds in game number one allowing one run Lauren gave you a great number that has the attention of the Cardinals as well Keiko threw 74 pitches just 25 pitches in the strike zone. That doesn't mean they were strikes the foul balls and whatnot that were out of the strike zone but going through and inside the box 25 pitches ah. so the Cardinals are going to do all they can to make Keuchel work back toward the middle of the strike zone as often as they can. This is a velocity game. He spends most of the game around 88 miles an hour. If you do that you have to give the hitters the appearance that you're throwing strikes. One of the slowest fastballs on average in all of Major League Baseball. Deception game and a lot of balls put in play for Keiko as well. And as we talked about in game one, the left side of the infield is at a premium with Keiko, specifically against right handed batters. Josh Donaldson, Dansby Swanson. They will be busy today if Keiko is on his A game. And a swing and a miss. Wong strikes out. Second out of the first inning for Dallas Keiko. Nice slider by Keiko. McCann behind the plate, catching Keiko nine times. They hooked up this summer. You see Brian McCann and Keiko there. Four gold gloves. Great athlete, Dallas Keiko. And you see around the infield, infield defense is one of the great strengths of the Atlanta Braves. And in the outfield, the speedy Acuna Jr., flanked by Marcakis and Joyce. Dallas Keiko with his first strikeout in this NLDS as he faces Paul Goldschmidt. Matter of fact, Keiko no K's in each of his last two postseason starts prior to this one here today. Had been the only pitcher in postseason history with consecutive postseason starts with no strikeouts of those who qualify three or more innings. So he's not going to rely on the strikeout much, but he has one in the books here in the first. 2 0 to Goldschmidt. This is going to be the part of the order that's going to be tough on Keiko. Goldschmidt's got four hits in the series and a home run, and Ozuna's red hot right behind him. Two balls, no strikes. And it goes to 3 0. Including the postseason, Goldschmidt, his career against Keiko, four hits and 20 at bats, has eight strikeouts. Mm. Cardinals have to get production from these two in the order but it does begin with the top two in the order getting on and giving them some RBI opportunities which ah. they haven't done much of in the last two games. You saw the last last two at bats last night by Goldschmidt he was trying to go to right field robbed by Freeman once and then hit a double down the right field line. Goldschmidt sends one deep to left. Way back. This one is going to fly out of here. Towering fly ball home run. And the Cardinals strike first. Paul Goldschmidt with his second home run of this division series. Almost like Keuchel didn't want any part of Goldschmidt going 3-0 and 
then threw a strike and then decided to challenge him. And that 3-1 fastball away stayed up. And that's what the Cardinals are trying to do in this game. Get Keuchel up in the strike zone. That was just below belt high. And like you said, a towering shot to left. Paul Goldschmidt continues his success in the postseason. That's his sixth career homer in just 12 postseason games. And his second of this series. Now it's Ozuna who takes a ball. I will say this though that ball Goldschmidt watched it. He thought it was yeah. long gone. It was not long gone. It just cleared the fence. Gives you an idea about how the ball is traveling here. Now Ozuna is that going to stay fair. That's got plenty of heat and that one is gone. Back to back Jacks for the St. Louis Cardinals. to open talking about how the rest of the hitters other than Goldschmidt and Ozuna were going to have to hit today. Maybe not. Maybe not. With that kind of start. That was a bomb. And Marcelo Ozuna is scorching hot in this series after a slow finish to the year in the regular season. Ozuna's got seven hits now. Three doubles and now one of the longest home runs we've seen. 2 nothing. First inning. Both runs coming with two outs. Yadier Molina now. On the second offering from Keuchel, he tried to get inside with that cutter. It never got there. And the ability to keep it fair as well. That ball had very little hook on it. It was hit so hard. That's why I never had a chance to hook. One ball, one strike. Molina on the ground gets sawed off. Swanson with plenty of time, and that will retire the side. But the Cardinals come out swinging here this afternoon, facing elimination. Marcel Ozuna, his first career postseason homer. Two nothing Redbirds. He's facing elimination in their postseason debut. Bud Smith back in 2001. Michael Walker had a memorable performance. Donaldson on the first pitch, a roller up the line. Goldschmidt puts the tag on him, and the out is recorded. I think he's saying he's out yes. of the baseline. First base umpire Tom Hallion. And so one pitch and one out for Dakota Hudson. And if you're going to be facing elimination as a rookie starter, getting two on the board in the first inning is well, big. Well, Aaron throw here from DeYoung. Nice play by Goldschmidt. We've seen some great play by the first baseman's all series long. He misses the tag, but Donaldson, of course, went three or four feet to his right. No, he got him. He got him right across the uh, the Atlanta moniker. One away here is Nick Marcakis, ah! who takes a strike. That's been a familiar theme from Nick Marcakis. He has not swung often in this series especially on the first pitch no balls and a strike here to Marquez he takes a ball what do you have Lauren Shahadi on the veteran plate discipline of Nick Marquez you're right B.A. Nick Marquez and Brian McCann it's even 21 first pitches in this series coming into the game and had taken every single one of them they also swung the bat 30 times in the series with just four times the two oldest position players pretty selective so far yeah, and Marquez has all of those four Basically, Brian McCann has not swung and missed yet <laughs> in this series. Marquez now 14 first pitch takes, and it kind of makes you feel like he's just saving that first ball swing, right? That ambush swing to an important spot as he takes one down in the in the dirt. Good block back there by Molina. Yeah, waiting for that second and third and one out where he swings at that first pitch. But Marquez contact percentage 86. 0.77%. That's second in the NL after Anthony Rendon. Two balls, two strikes. Dakota Hudson deals. Marquez spoils one foul. 
Marquez has missed six months. He had a wrist injury. Hit by a pitch and he was out. He came back. In September and swung the bat very well. They were surprised at how well he came back. You're concerned about. Not only play discipline but just seeing major league pitching after being down that long. Uh, he has had a struggle here in the DS. That's a bouncer over to Carpenter. And he'll make the play for the out. Two gone in the inning. A couple of ground ball outs for Dakota Hudson. Every batted ball thus far has been on the ground against Dakota Hudson. We spent a lot of time talking about it when Jack Flaherty pitched that he did not get a lot of run support this year. Well, Hudson did. Almost a little over six runs per game of support when Hudson took the mound. Eighth highest in the major leagues in run support. Nine wins post All Star break. You don't win that many games without your offense delivering for you. Here's Matt Joyce and a big swing and a miss on the first pitch. If the Cardinals survive today and force a game five, they'll have Jack Flaherty on the mound. No balls and a strike. And Joyce takes a ball. I think that's a, the biggest storyline right yeah. now for, for St. Louis. Obviously, you're trying to keep this series going but for a team that's up 2 one in the Braves knowing that the Cardinal ace is waiting on the other side that does add a little bit of the pressure to the mix but don't sleep on Fulton Evich because he outpitched him in that ball game seven shutout innings for Fulton Evich and Brian Snicker said he would go at Fulton Evich he is the game five starter and he would love to see a rematch of Fulton Evich and Flaherty if it gets to a game five both of these managers very confident in their club's ability. Three balls and a strike on Joyce. And a swing and a miss. That had some run to it. Three and two now. Three one count. Joyce knows the fastball coming still swings through it. And a lot of movement that starts on the. Inside part of the plate to the left handed hitter runs all the way to the outside and he missed it. He's got a lot of life on his pitches. Three and two two outs in the second here he comes and Joyce fouls it away. Joyce has been in there every day he started all four games Braves have not changed their lineup at all in the position player grouping Joyce just one for eight in the series. You're talking about Hudson's movement that's one of the reasons that he led the National League in walks this year with 86 is because of all that movement on his pitches. Three and two two outs. And he lost him. So Joyce draws the walk first walk issued by Dakota Hudson. And the Braves with a runner on with two outs. Well it's the month where stars rise and legends are born follow MLB on Facebook Instagram Twitter and YouTube all postseason long follow all of the action. What a scene here in St. Louis I could not ask for. A better day. Not a cloud in the sky. McCann mm. on the first pitch. First time all series. Remember what Lauren told you. And he pops it up, and that's going to be the inning. He took a shot to ambush one, and it ends the frame, and it's 2 0 Cardinals as we head to the St. Louis second. Actually, Division Series on TBS. Great to have you with us this afternoon. What a day of baseball we have. Four games, all four possible elimination games when the day began. And that is the case here for the Atlanta Braves to eliminate the Cardinals. Cardinals off to a great start. Back to back home runs in the first inning. Goldschmidt and Ozuna. And Matt Carpenter leads off this second inning against Dallas Keuchel. Braves have gone back to back in the postseason three occasions. St. Louis Cardinals 
I should say, going back to back on three ah. occasions. Last to do it, Gritchick and Wong go back to 2004. Pujols and Roland, Goldschmidt and Ozuna here this afternoon. Mm -hmm. One ball, one strike on Carpenter. Hits it sharply to right. Joyce right there to make the play for the out. So a lot of hard contact so far against Keuchel. Just the opposite of what we see in the Braves off Hudson. And that brings up Tommy Edmond. Edmond hit second the first two games of this series. Had two hits in the opener. He's two for 11 coming in. And his first postseason. Not only was he a surprise this year for the Cardinals, I think he surprised himself. He actually scheduled a wedding for this time of year. I want to say last weekend. I think it was last Saturday. And <laughs> they had to postpone that wedding to November. He wasn't uh, thinking his calendar would be booked in the month of October. Mike Schill told us a story before the game spring training playing the Nationals and Anthony Rendon of the Nationals liked the looks of Edmund this young player coming up from uh, minor league camp. He said hey this guy's going to be a good player. I'm going to have to get him to sign something as McCann takes a look that'll be in the seats. He goes he's he's going to make your ball club right. And I said no actually we're going to start him in triple A he goes oh, that won't last. <laughs> so who knew Anthony Rendon was a qualified Major League Baseball scout and he was right. Edmund has been a terrific addition for St. Louis. He's given them life. Team that was just kind of rolling along as a 500 team early in the schedule. Two and one to count and a strike. Edmund made his major league debut June 8th. Since the All-Star break, he's essentially been in the lineup every day. But the last two days, Carpenter has been inserted at third. Edmund moving out to right field. Here's a 2-2. Patience is a virtue against Dallas Keuchel. Payoff pitch. Edmund yanks it foul. Mike Schilt told us before the game that Tommy Edmund has more power from the right side. Had 11 home runs this year. He had 304. First Cardinal rookie to hit higher than Edmund's 304 since Pujols hit 329 back in 01. And a little tap or foul by Edmund. He stays alive. Got a long battle here between Dallas Keuchel and Tommy Edmund. Shadow starting to creep out onto the playing surface now. That is going to become a major story in the middle to late of this game, especially in the outfield. Left field is brutal. Late afternoon games here in St. Louis. Edmund rips one into the gap left center field. That's going to get down. It goes to the wall. Edmund can run and he will pull up the reins around second base. Eight pitch at bat results in a double for Tommy Edmund. And a one out extra base hit for the Cardinals in the second inning. Again, it looks like that little cutter that he's trying to get inside on the righties. He's not getting it there and not getting it down. It's been up in the strike zone, and Edmund splits the outfielders. Cardinals offense has arrived early today. Three hits, three extra base hits. First seven batters to face Dallas Keiko. Back to back home runs in the first Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Now it's Paul DeYoung. The Cardinals only had two extra base hits in the last two games. 
They've got three already in the first seven hitters. Keiko the long pause and the young takes a strike. Mm. Activity in the Atlanta bullpen already. Luke Jackson, he'd be the closer for the starter, you could say, yeah. today. Get out of a jam. They do have Julio Tehran, who essentially would be their long man. He was added to this roster after Chris Martin was injured in game one. Tehran, a starting pitcher during the regular season. A swing and a miss. A young chased one upstairs. 0 and 2 the count. Young will be a gold glove candidate this year. Converted to the position just a few years ago. Big power hitter. Set a Cardinal franchise record for home runs by a shortstop in a single season. He's done that twice. He broke his own record this year. The Young hit 30 this season. A lot of discussion yesterday as the Cardinals were clinging to a one nothing lead should you have Paul DeYoung drop a bunt down to advance runners that was an emphatic no <laughs> from Mike Schilt I agree with him a guy yeah. like Paul DeYoung I mean he's a major threat Schilt did tell us he hasn't bunted all year and he got the 2 and 0 he hasn't bunted all year and he's a game changer he's the kind of guy that can hit the ball in the ballpark at any time it didn't work out but of all the Elements available to Mike Schilt and the percentages that he's looking at. Bunting successfully was probably last on the list. Mm. It's not an automatic. And he did work the count into a 2 0 count. That was against Max Fried. He ended up popping up in a 2 0 count. The inability to add on for the Cardinals yesterday kept the Braves in the game. And then, of course, with two outs in the ninth, they scored three runs. And won the game. Well, there was so much talk about Wainwright, and rightfully so. What a game he had. Not enough talk about Mike Soroka and what he did to keep the Braves in that game. Soroka went seven. 22 year old Canadian was top shelf yesterday for Atlanta. Pitching on the road in his first postseason game. A swing at a miss. Keiko gets to Young for out number two. So two gone with a runner at second to go to Hudson the pitcher will bat no strikeouts in his first start of four and two thirds innings a couple of strikeouts here for Keiko. This is the cutter that he's been trying to throw down in the strike zone. All right two outs here with Keiko's mound opponent coming up. Let's check in with Lauren Lauren talking about the the Cardinals standing pat at the trade deadline and it's earned him a trip to the NLDS. Yeah the Braves busy at the deadline John Moselak president of baseball ops for the Cardinals very vocal saying I feel like the guys who are going to take us where we need to go are in this room. Mm. He felt as currently constructed they were good enough so they had a quiet deadline. They would have loved an extra bat explored pitching but didn't want to overpay for a bat or a back end rental so they stayed put. He's done a great job John Moselock. He deserves a lot of credit. He's been the general manager of the Cardinals since the 2007 season. Has a World Series ring in 2011. Protege of Walt Jockey. Right. Done a lot of winning here through the years. Although the last three seasons missing the postseason. You could understand why no movement at the trade deadline would create some anxiety here with Cardinal fans. But the move paid off. He trusted his players. They won the division on the last day of the year. Jack Flaherty pitched him to that division title. Two games better than the Milwaukee Brewers in the Central Division. The fact the Cardinals had to fight for that division title all the way till the end. Most of the Cardinal personnel would tell you has helped them get to this position into the postseason the game one win. these have been close games could have swung either way all three games both teams had a claim to the victory at one point. Well the Cardinals probably feel like they've been playing elimination games for a month. Eighty eight games into the season they were forty four and forty four. They lost sixteen of twenty four games in May. 
two series with the Braves in the month of May. They lost each of those series two out of three. So the Braves won the season series four games to two. Different ball club though now. Swing and a foul. Hudson stays alive. Pitch count rising for Keichel. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. This will be pitch number 40 for Dallas Keuchel. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get through the fifth inning in game one. That's 74 pitches in that game. This will be the 24th pitch of this inning. And Hudson takes a ball. Three and two now with two outs. And Keuchel has filled the count against the Cardinal pitcher with Fowler due next. Hudson had four hits this year and 51 at bats. And he takes a call, strike three. Keiko punches him out to end the inning. Back to back K's for Keiko. He's got three, a scoreless frame in the second. Monkeys and the Twin Series. And then tomorrow, these games are both, uh, if necessary, on FS1. 4 p.m. Eastern, game four between the Strohs and Rays. And 8 p.m. Eastern Yankees Twins would square off. For more information, click the MLB at bat app. Rays out comfortably over the Astros, 9 3 in the seventh inning. And Tampa Bay trying to extend that series. That was Morton against Zach Grinke today. Yeah, Grinke Tampa struggling. Bay. Yeah, Tampa Bay beat up on Zach Grinke. Dansby Swanson will lead off for Atlanta. Play in the third inning. Two runs in for the Cardinals in the first. Back to back home runs Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Dakota Hudson looks like he's on his A game early. A lot of balls on the ground. Has one walk. His command is really at the heart of his struggles when he does struggle. He had a fantastic year. He and Flaherty make a fantastic one two young starting pitching combination, both under the tutelage of Adam Wainwright. And Yadier Molina, of course. Swanson into right center field. That's down for a base hit. Boy, he is on a roll at the plate. Confidence is high. Game tying hit yesterday in the ninth inning with two outs. He squared it at one, and he has some serious exit velo. This was his double off the wall yesterday. Over 107 miles an hour. Banged one through over 100 miles an hour. His second hit. And that was the hit right there that tied the game. 104-4. And that went off the bat with a base hit at 91 miles an hour. Needless to say, he is finding the barrel in this postseason. Dansby Swanson throughout the regular season averaged 89 miles an hour. Just shy of 90 miles an hour exit below. So with the postseason, he stepped his game up. He's averaging 95 off the bat. You want to find out who's swinging it well, just go to the well hit average. <laughs> Anything 95 miles an hour or better is part of the well hit percentage. Keiko can't get a bunt down. He does have two this year. To see Keichel, he fouled that off of Molina. Just said to him, "My bad." <laughs> Got to apologize to Yadier Molina That's when you do that. No solace, though. <laughs> Keichel's a great athlete, excellent fielding pitcher, can swing the bat well. Gives you a good at bat. Hoping he can get his bunts down here. Stands way forward in the box and right on top of the plate. One ball, one strike. And he bunts it foul. Always tell you the same thing. You really want to catch the ball with the bat, not jab at it. That's what happened to Keichel there. Swanson with the leadoff single. Keiko trying to move him over. And he takes a ball. Yeah. Close pitch. 
Jim Wolf, the home plate umpire, has a reputation of a pitcher's umpire. I don't know if that's because his younger brother <laughs> used to be a major league pitcher, Randy Wolf. Umpires don't like hearing that. Uh, Jim Wolf is friendly on the edges. His fifth division series. He's also officiated a World Series in his career. Keiko cannot get the bunt down. That's going to be a strikeout. Dakota Hudson picks up his first K of the game. And one away. Swanson still at first. Hey, the Bleacher Report app connects you to the moments that matter faster. Follow your friends and give your take on highlights, scores, and more. Download the BR app today. One away now. Back to the top of the order. Second time around against Dakota Hudson. Here is Ronald Acuna Jr. Reached on an infield hit in the first. Albies replaced him on a fielder's choice, and then Hudson got a double play ball to end the inning. Again, that movement that you were talking about, Brian, that ball started on the outside part and ended up almost hitting Acuna Jr. Acuna has the kind of pop to tie this game quickly. Hit 41 home runs during the regular season, top five in the National League. Has hit 67 home runs through his first two seasons. That is top six most MLB history. Also scored 205 runs in his first two years, which is in the top 10 in Major League Baseball history. And he's 21. Big swing and a miss. A ball and a strike on Acuna. Ron Washington, the Braves' third base coach, former Texas Rangers manager. He's got a few nightmares in this ballpark. Right, going back to the 2011 World Series. One of the great coaches in the game, infield coach, but also excellent at third base. Cunha's getting some good swings so far off Hudson. First time through the order, batters hit 236 off Hudson. Second time, 285. Here's a one two. And it's lined in the right center. Base hit for Acuna. Swanson's going to turn and head to third. Ronald Acuna Jr. with his second hit of the game. Now the Braves putting up a threat here in this third inning. First and third with one away. Well, both Swanson and Acuna Jr. are able to get that sinking fastball elevated a little from Hudson. And this is just good hitting. Inside out swing and drops it into right center field. Good hustle by Swanson to go first to third. Underrated part of base running is the ability of teams to go first to third on a base hit. Good hustle. Edmund does have a strong throwing arm. But Swanson very fast, able to take third. Now it's first and third with one out for Ozzie Albies. Albies lays off the first pitch this time. Foul to pitch off his foot, his shin, last time up. And then reached on a fielder's choice. Twenty two year old second baseman, Ozzie Albies. Hard to think about a guy this young as a leader of the ball club, but at every stage of his professional career, starting in rookie ball, A ball, double A. He's been the youngest player and has been the unquestioned leader, which is fascinating to me. Braves signed him when he was 16. A ball and no strikes. And that ball's in the air, right center field. Hit well. Edmonds on the run will run it down. Swanson will tag. And he will score. Ozzie Albies with a sack fly at an RBI. Excellent running catch by Tommy Edmond. 
for the second out of the inning. But the Braves are on the board. It's 2-1 St. Louis. Well, great jump by Edmund. Off the bat, it looked like it was going to be a double by Albies, but he ran it down. Albies gets the sacrifice fly. He makes you forget he's an infielder. Tommy Edmund plays an excellent outfield. He says he's comfortable out there now. No issues, even in a postseason. It's rare that you can find a guy that's going to play above average infield, and he's been a starter at third base twice. And he makes a nice running catch in the outfield. Never played the outfield professionally until he got to the big leagues. Freddie Freeman now with two outs. Cunha has a big lead over at first base. It's a huge lead. Hudson does not have a quick move, and he doesn't really throw it hard over there either. Freeman bounced into a double play. Inning ending double play in the first. Seen more swings and misses from Freddie Freeman in this series yeah. than you would expect. It's been that kind of September for him, and that has carried over into this postseason. Cardinals got two in the first back to back home runs from Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Braves have just scored for the first time. Sacrifice fly Albies after a leadoff single by Swanson. His ability to go first to third on the single set up the run. One and one to Freeman. He takes it down. Two balls and a strike. Our T Mobile extended coverage as you see the lead of. Ronald Acuna Jr. at first. Two hits in the inning. Hudson struck out the pitcher Keichel trying to bun. And now Freeman a wave and a miss. We talked about those bone spurs that he has in that right arm. It's almost like he can't cover right now that outside corner. Which is one of his strengths when he's going well. Drives the ball to the opposite field gap. His home run in game one came to straightaway center. 2 2 pitch. Nice block by Molina. Smothers it. Keeps Acuna at first base. Nobody better than that guy. Slider down in the strike zone. Beautiful block by Molina. Jumps on it. It's not just that he blocks it to keep the runner at bay if it's a one out no out situation double play intact. It's also the confidence of the pitcher to be able to snap that slider. He trusts Molina. They all trust Molina. Cunha is going to get a head start three and two the count two outs. Goldschmidt backs up. There he goes. Freddie Freeman strikes out. A swing and a miss to end the inning and Dakota Hudson gives up a run but strands a runner at first Braves are on the board Hudson with a punch out his second of the game still 2 1 Cardinals Full swing you can watch all season long on TNT and stream every match live on BR live NLDS game four Cardinals Braves Atlanta with a snatch them back win yesterday scoring three runs with two outs in the ninth inning they won game three they're up 2 one in this series Atlanta just scored sack fly RBI from Albies and now Dallas Keiko back on the mound with Fowler Wong and Goldschmidt coming up Fowler bounced to second base on the very first pitch he saw taking two here one ball one strike this is a bat that the Cardinals must get going not only has he struggled in this series but it's been that way all season long against Atlanta three for thirty two during their regular season series hit hard but right at Albies and Fowler is 0 for two A moment ago Lauren caught up with brave skipper Brian Snicker. 
Brian, used to seeing ground balls off Dallas Keuchel, not as many today. What's been the difference? Well, uh, just probably the, the fastball command early on, you know. It's like talk to him and Mac and feel good about things. We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully he gets, you know, he keeps putting the ball on the ground. On the board now, you've compared this team to an NBA team. Why? Well, just they, they come back late. They're never out of a game. I mean, it's um, a lot of times for the last couple of years, the best stuff happens the last third of the game. Drama's fun for us, not for you. Appreciate it, Skip. All right, thanks. Uh, 43rd year of the organization for Brian Snitker. I like that reference, though. NBA, last five minutes, you never know, last, right? Last two games, a couple of three-pointers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That three-run ninth inning last night is Wong swings and misses. I mean, that was coming from off the deck. You mm. just rarely see that with a closer on the mound, especially Carlos Martinez had two outs. Swanson at the plate. He just could not finish it off. Swanson had the double to tie the game. Adam Duvall had a two RBI single to stretch the lead. And when it was all said and done, it was a Braves 3-1 victory. Darren O'Day is in the bullpen for uh, the Braves. What makes you feel like if Wong got on, he might be in the game? It could be. You got Goldschmidt to next. Wong rolls one foul. Wong a strikeout victim his first time up. Keichel deals a one two he got him again looked like the same pitch in the same spot. And Wong is strikeout victim number four. Two up two down. All right here comes Paul Goldschmidt take us to the at bat in the first. Well the first time through he tried to get him to bite on three sinkers down in the strike zone. Ended up throwing one for a strike and then the change up that he got too far inside and Goldschmidt just hit a towering shot to left field put the spin rate on there all of those were average spin rate so nothing out of the ordinary for Keiko and Goldschmidt finally got him into the strike zone on what looked like a sinker that was missed location wise from Keiko and Goldschmidt didn't miss it banged it into the bleachers in left field Goldschmidt pops up Freeman is over. He's got room and he'll make the catch. And Dallas Keiko with his best inning yet. After the Braves score in the third, Keiko puts up a zero in the bottom of the third. A three up, three down frame. Two one Cardinals. It's St. Louis, Missouri. On the banks of the mighty Mississippi. And here we are in game four. NLDS, Braves, Cardinals. Braves trying to end this series here today. And advance into the National League Championship Series. Either the Dodgers or the Nationals await. And the Cardinals trying to extend it to a Game 5. Which would be Wednesday night. Here on TBS. Game 5 would be back in Atlanta. And that pitching matchup has already been decided. If it does go there. Mike fulton Evich for Atlanta. Jack Flaherty for the Cardinals. Josh Donaldson leads off. And is ahead in the count 2-0. and oh. By the way it's. Fulton Avich's birthday today, I understand. Casey he does pitch in game That's five right. after his magical game two performance. He's 28 today. Just make you feel old, Ron. One more time. <laughs> Both of us. Come on. <laughs> and Donaldson ahead 3 0. Oh. Donaldson drove in runs in the first inning of each of the first two games. One on a fielder's choice, the other on a base hit. Donaldson was one for 11 with the Indians in the postseason last year. And he walks on four pitches. Lead off walk from Dakota Hudson. Moment ago, Lauren caught up with Mike Schilt, the Cardinal manager. Mike, you told me Dakota needs to be ahead early and down. Are you seeing what you want to see? Yeah, very much so. I mean, really pounding early on, first inning, first couple innings, ball elevated a little bit, last inning on him. I got balls in the outfield, but um, overall, pretty good stuff. Don't chase Keuchel. Was the game plan? Are you executing? We are. Yeah, we are for the most part. He's still um, making his pitches, but we got a couple balls up, made him pay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. And those four pitches elevated to Donaldson, all balls. And that's Donaldson had 100 walks this season, fourth in the NL. 
Here's Nick Markakis. And again, oh. takes a first pitch. This one is a strike. Hudson's got good stuff today. You don't want to see him beat himself with walks. Shadows, very pro pitcher right now. Mm -hmm, no doubt. And hitters will tell you it, it is not only is it tough to see because of the shadows, but the brightness as well. The brightness of the ballpark, the backdrop. That's a ground ball right to DeYoung. Flips to Wong. The turn is in time. Double play. And the ground ball ability of Dakota Hudson eliminates a four pitch walk. 6 4 3 double play. The second turn by the Cardinals today. Well, Brian Snicker talked about that Dallas Keuchel's always one pitch away from getting out of a jam. Well, the same for Dakota Hudson and the Cardinals. 170 double plays. That was tied for the first in the major leagues with the White Sox this year for the Cardinals. Seven outs on the ground. Just two outs in the air. One of those was the pop up in the foul territory. And now Joyce who takes a ball. Joyce walked his last time up. Hudson's walked two. He's eliminated two base runners with the double play ball. Cardinals have three hits. Braves have three hits. No sink in that baseball. Got to get a, got to get the sinker ball. There used to be a phrase when I played that said that certain pitchers threw a heavy ball. It seems like Hudson yeah. does. Same description we heard from Mike Soroka yesterday. Joyce lifts it in the air. Ozuna eases under it. And that'll do it for the Braves in the fourth. Cardinals coming to bat. Marcelo Ozuna in a booming home run. Molina, then Carpenter. 2 1 Redbirds. AI powered by AWS. Marcelo Ozuna, second of a back to back. And the last one into the upper deck here at Bush Stadium. Ozuna with a long home run. He leads off this St. Louis fourth inning. Keiko coming off a 10 pitch inning. Ozuna, one of those guys, Ronnie, hits a ball about as hard as anybody in the game. He does when he's hitting it. He can be a very streaky player over the last 29 games of the regular season. Only hit 144, 7 for 13 in this series. Hand injuries this year. Had a couple of fractures to fingers diving back into first base. That was in late June. And, you know, a hitter and hand injuries, fingers, wrist, it can be tough to produce with that kind of injury but he has found it in the postseason he's feeling better the hands recovered he missed all of July with those injuries so he's come back in August and September had a dismal September as you mentioned been a different kind of hitter here in the postseason and for a free agent to be he is certainly putting his name on the list. At one point with the Marlins before he was traded he was an MVP candidate. It's sawed off here by Keiko and the count will remain at a ball and two strikes. You do feel like though watching this game is that the Cardinals have to add on some runs here. Keiko's not hasn't been at his best yet. Something they did not do yesterday. Scored a run in the second inning on a sack fly did not score again. One ball, two strikes on Ozuna. And he hits that one deep to left. This ball's way back. And Ozuna with his second home run. The Cardinals do add on. 3 1 St. Louis on Ozuna's second clout. Well, the Cardinals have been trying to elevate, but this ball is down by Keiko. But it's middle middle for Ozuna. Such a powerful swing. 
looking like the best hitter on the field right now in this series. Ozuna has had two hits in each of the first four games. And he's got two homers today as Molina takes a strike. He thought that 10 pitch inning that Keiko had in the third had him back in place, but it makes another mistake to Ozuna. Three to one. The Cardinals get the run back. Braves scored in the third. Molina mm. lost the bat, chased one, didn't mean to do it. Cardinals haven't had a multi homer game since Carlos Beltran did it back in 2012. Ozuna has his second. These are his first two home runs. In his postseason history, participating in his first postseason, Marcelo Zuna. Low five with Ron Pop Warner. Two time All Star. Huge numbers with the Marlins. Cardinals traded for him prior to last season. That mass exodus by the Marlins trading Yelich, the MVP, and then Ozuna. John Carlos Stanton, what an outfield. So the Cardinals score one run in 18 innings between games two and three. Now they have three on the board on four hits as Molina rolls to Swanson for the first out. One gone for Matt Carpenter. Carpenter in his second consecutive start. Used as a pinch hitter in games one and two. Had a big moment as a pinch hitter in game one off Melanson. Had a single that tied the game. Cardinals would score four more runs in the ninth inning of game one to win that game. Yesterday, Carpenter had a sacrifice fly. Delivering the only Cardinal run in yesterday's game. He's one for four now with two runs batted in. Hit the ball sharply his last time up did Carpenter as he takes one inside for a ball. Three and all the count. And a right hander, a switch hitter, I beg your pardon, who will hit right handed Tommy Edmond on deck. Mm. Start to wonder how long Brian Snitker is going to let it ride with Keiko. Jackson is ready in the Braves bullpen. Ow. Here's a three one. In there for strike two. Coming back from 3 0. Nick Markakis is the most patient Braves hitter. Carpenter is the most patient Cardinals hitter. And the payoff. He mm. lost him. Carpenter is aboard. It's a one out walk. Ozuna gets his inning started with a home run. Brian Snickers on his way for a double switch. And the end of the line for Dallas Keiko. Three and a third today for Keiko. Could not get out of the fifth inning in game one, and he will exit here in the fourth in game four. Snicker wanted to get multiple innings out of Luke Jackson. He employs the double switch. Adam Duvall on the other side. The call presented by Physicians Mutual Insurance for all of us. Set up the changes. Keiko's out. Marcel Ozuna, not once, but twice here in game four. And the Cardinals are up three to one. Adam Duvall will enter on the back end of the double switch. He'll play left field. That moves Markakis to right. And the new pitcher, Ron, is Luke Jackson, former closer of the Braves, now 
in for Keiko to try to finish off this inning. Maybe a multi-inning effort here today. Remember, he pitched in game one after Chris Martin hurt himself on his second pitch. He gave up a home run to Goldschmidt. Turns Edmund around ah. left-handed. The switch hitter takes strike one. There is one out in the inning. Ozuna with a home run to start the fourth. Dallas Keuchel 67 pitches goes three and a third today. So only goes eight innings and in his two starts in the series. And right now on the hook for the loss at a 3-1 Cardinal lead. A lot of baseball to be played here. Only in the fourth. Edmund with a double his last time up as a right handed batter. He shot the gap in left center. Was left stranded at second base. Keiko had retired five in a row and seven of eight before giving up that home run to Ozuna. Double switch by Snicker will have Duvall third up in the fifth inning. He's now in the nine spot in the order. Hoping to get multiple innings out of Jackson, you would think. Ten times this year, Luke Jackson went more than one inning. Six times he pitched two innings. Had an inning and a third on September 25th. He pitched in just about every single role you can pitch for the Braves out of the bullpen this year. Was their closer to start the season? They remade their bullpen via the trade wire, and Jackson ending up in the middle. Now he's in a full count here with Edmund. Three and two to count. I would expect Mike Schilt. To step on the accelerator here. He might have Carpenter going with Edmund up. Think of Edmund as more of a contact hitter. Full count, one away. Edmund batting in the seventh spot of the Cardinal lineup. There goes the runner, Carpenter, and that's bounced in. Ball four. First and second with one out. And that'll bring up Paul DeYoung. Let's send it down to Lauren Shahadi. What do you have, Lauren? Brian and Ron, you mentioned two hits in each of the first four games for Marcelo Zuni. He told me after game one, I focus on me and what I can do better rather than getting caught up in what the pitcher is offering. But think about it. Two hits off Keuchel, two off Melanson, two off Sirocco, one off Fulte and Shane Green. All such different looks. He's put himself in some Cardinal history with four straight games with multi-hit games. Jim Edmonds and Pepper Martin of the Gas House Gang Cardinals are the only two that have been able to accomplish that feat as DeYoung takes a ball. So Jim Edmonds in 2000 had multi hit games in four consecutive games. Pepper Martin has a Cardinal record with five, 1931. And now Ozuna with four straight. And his two home runs have given this. Cardinal fan base a shot here. They are fired up early in St. Louis as DeYoung takes a strike. One ball, one strike on DeYoung. Two on, one away. Into the bullpen early, the Braves. Here's a 1 1. DeYoung on the ground foul. Schild has his pitcher due up next. And with the lead, we'll certainly will let Dakota Hudson roll. One ball, two strikes. Carpenter and Edmund on the bags. The young takes one up and in. 97 with a fastball. Two and two now. Trying to throw that up and in too far up and in for the young to offer at it. Mm -hmm. 
to Young with two hits in the series. And he's able to lay off. That's a wicked slider. That's a good take by DeYoung. Three and two the count now. I mean, that's got Jackson's mind spinning. <laughs> How you lay off that pitch, especially with the shadows, right? Right. Big spot for the Cardinals, a chance to add more. They lead 3-1. Full count, two on, and a cold strike three. Jackson rings the bell on DeYoung. A big strikeout for Jackson for the second out of the inning. Well, Jackson got the call from Jim Wolf up and away. Paint. Four seam fastball taken by DeYoung. Every pitcher wants that call to strike. Every hitter wants that call to ball. Not even looking at See home the plate. eyes of Jackson, right? Looking into the Cardinal dugout. Well, a key out. Now the pitcher is at the plate, Hudson, and a way out of this inning for Jackson. Slider no match for Dakota Hudson. That eighth position in a National League batting order is such an important spot in the lineup. Cardinals love having DeYoung there. He hasn't hit there all year. Matter of fact, hasn't hit eighth since May of last season when Mike Matheny was managing. But Mike Schilt wanted him in that spot yesterday. Just like the idea of a little pop from the eighth position in the order. But the threat of the strikeout is there as well. And there is that avenue out of the inning. Hudson is late. He fouls it away, and it's one and two. You know, the responsibility, though, of the eighth hitter is that a pitch that's close, you can't take, yeah, you can't especially take. with a pitcher behind you who isn't a good, it wasn't a very good hitter. Have to expand a little bit, right? Yep. Maybe the last chance to produce runs. Not that Dakota Hudson can't deliver a base uh -huh. hit here. He certainly has the opportunity, but you wouldn't expect it. One and two the count. Jackson deals, and a good block back there by McCann. Two and two. Two outs in the Cardinal fourth, and Hudson strikes out to end the inning. Back to back K's for Jackson. Huge K on DeYoung, but Marcel Ozuna delivers one in the seats. His second homer of the game. And by T Mobile, introducing his newest, most powerful signal ever. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile is with you. Sparkling sunny day in St. Louis, and the Cardinals. Are flying high thus far. Marcelo Zuna has hit a couple of long home runs. Two hits, two homers for Ozuna, the Cardinal left fielder. His first two postseason home runs has had two hits in each of the four games of this division series. Three to one, our score. Cardinals have a lead. We go to the fifth now. Brian McCann, Dansby Swanson, and then Adam Duvall will bat for Atlanta. Dakota Hudson. In the sunshine on the mound, pitching into the shadows, coming off a nine pitch fourth inning after a leadoff walk. He walked Donaldson on four pitches last inning and then a double play ball and a routine fly ball to left. The way it's working right now, the pitcher's in the sunlight, then there's shadows, and then the hitter is in a little bit of sunlight right now. Get them while you can <laughs> from an offensive perspective, it can be tough. There's a strike to McCann, two and one. McCann popped up to short his last time up, only three outs in the air. For the ground ball pitcher, Dakota Hudson. McCann lays off, three and one now. Hitters count three and one. 
And McCann rolls over one foul. Got in on him a little bit. Yeah, might have swung a ball four there, McCann. Been a great player for a long time, McCann. World Series champion with the Astros. Some good years with the Yankees. Got a chance to hit 300 homers in his career. He's at 282 right now. Eighth most by a catcher all mm. time. 3 2 pitch. And McCann in the air, right field, in the gap. Edmund closes and makes a play. He's been busy out there today. Nice catch, one away. Dakota Hudson gets a first out of the fifth. Well, it really hasn't been those kind of outs, though, for Hudson. He's kept the ball down, he's kept it away, and he's kept it on the ground. He's got a couple of double plays uh, from his sinker, and he's been throwing strikes for the most part. And a lot of soft contact because of that sinking fastball. Played his high school ball in Dunlap, Tennessee. Braves country, Lauren Shahadi. Is B.A. Dakota was asked if warming up in the bullpen early in the series helped him get loose and get a taste of, you know, what postseason baseball would be like. He said, I experienced that kind of crazy adrenaline warming up in game one, and I feel like it helped prepare me for today. As you said, grew up about an hour and a half away from Atlanta. His first Braves game was against the Cardinals. We asked him what he remembered. He said, Chipper Jones hitting a bomb two rows in front of me. <laughs> Go figure it. Well, there's a lot of ties between these two organizations, not just with the players. You know, Mike fulton had that great game, too. He, he grew up a huge Cardinal fan and uh, certainly has the respect for this organization. You got Wayne Wright, who was in the Braves organization, a Georgia boy who has had a long story career with the Cardinals now. And it goes beyond that as well. You hear about the Cardinal way all of the time. And. When the Braves got to Atlanta and some of the early influencers there, especially as they got into that run of the 90s and the 14 straight division titles, there were some key individuals that came from the Cardinals organization that went to the Braves. Names like Jim Beecham, Bobby Dews, Bobby Dews, that's a good Terry Pendleton, Joe Torrey. So there's all these great connections between these two organizations as Swanson sends this one into the seats in foul territory. Uh, historic National League franchises. Atlanta, of course, had their roots in Boston as a National League team, then through Milwaukee, a World Series title in Milwaukee, and then, of course, in Atlanta in the 60s. And had that amazing run with 14 straight division titles. Now they've won back to back division titles. They are trying to advance in a postseason series for the first time in 18 years. Got to go back to the 2001 season, the last Braves team that won a postseason series. Braves, a charter member of the National League, 1876. Cardinals came along a little bit after, 1882. <laughs> okay. Rumor is Brian Snitker was the first base coach. That's right. John Gurchikov, give him a point. Three and two the count. And a swing and a foul. Swanson stays alive. It's been one of the themes of this series. Old school NL franchises, and it has the feel of an old school series thus far. Been three excellent games. With uh, two baseball lifers as the managers of each team. Snitker's 43rd year in the Brave system. Mike Schilt, his 16th year in the Cardinal organization. Another payoff to Swanson. That is a fair ball, hits the bag, and now down off the sidewall in foul territory. And Dansby Swanson with a double with one out. Carpenter was there, but the ball hit the top of the bag. And Swanson is aboard with his second hit. What a series he is having. And a nice little break here. It still would have been a tough play for Carpenter because he was going to be deep. But once it skips off the bag, it goes to his right and he has no play. Had to hustle after it, though, because it hits the sidewall. Nothing Carpenter could do about that. Swanson now 7 for 13. Mm. Has hit in four consecutive at-bats. Andrew Jones the last to do that back in the 04 season. 
And now Adam Duvall's first at bat of the game came in on the double switch last inning. He's driven in four runs in this series. Has not started a game yet. And that jumps out of the glove of Molina. Yikes. Boy, that is a rare bird right there. And Molina is furious at himself. Now Swanson to third base with one away. That is not something you see happen to Yadier Molina very often. That hurt his hand, too. Fastball right down the middle. And I don't know if he was trying to frame it, but it caught him almost right on the just above the wrist. And the reaction by Molina. That is a big play. Molina already in a squat. The athletic trainer is out. He's got the glove off. It officially goes as a pass ball. Well, Molina's had some hand issues the last couple of years. I think you hit on it, Ronnie. I think he's trying to steal a strike right there. Yeah. That power sinker of Dakota Hudson. Just busting the palm of his hand. The ball's running in, so he's trying to stick it there on the inside corner and does not catch it in the pocket. There's so much movement on that ball that it eludes Molina, but he's got to make that play. He knows that. Molina missed a couple of weeks in May and June with a torn tendon in that right hand. He came back, he played 21 games, and then went back on the injured list after the All Star break. It was termed as a right thumb tendon strain. So he went out for 21, then out for 28. Activity in the bullpen. Left hander Tyler Webb, who's been excellent thus far. Big spot here for Atlanta. You got Duvall at the plate. Runner at third, one out. After the pass ball by Molina. The 1 0. Duvall fouls it back, was late. Adam Duvall has been in the spotlight. While Jack Flaherty in a 1 0 Braves lead. That was a seventh inning, two run home run. For Adam Duvall, and then last night, a two RBI single in a 1 1 game put the Braves on top. He's driven in four runs. He's getting in these games earlier and earlier every game. And two at bats last night. That base hit came in his second plate appearance. We talked earlier in the series about the Atlanta bench and all of their injuries that they suffered. I think it's reasonable to say if everybody's healthy. Coming down the stretch here for Brian Snicker, Duvall is not mm -hmm. on the postseason right. roster. You're talking about names like NCRT and Culberson and Camargo. Two and one to count. Duvall a shot to third, bounces off Carpenter in the score is Swanson, and everybody's safe. The Cardinals sacrifice defense for offense with Carpenter. That one ate him up. A run is in. It's three to two now, and Duvall safe at first. Again, a ball hit right on the nose by Duvall. Eats up Carpenter at third base. Came in from the sunlight to the shadows, back out to the sunlight, and he couldn't make the play. It's got to be an E5. Yeah, E5 certainly can give Duvall an RBI. Actually, going to score that as a base hit. Wow. That is a gift. So that'll be an infield hit and an RBI for Adam Duvall, his fifth run batted in of this division series. Runner at first. Still just one out. Meeting at the mound with pitching coach Mike Maddox and Dakota Hudson. Hey, a reminder, NBA opening night presented by Auto Trader returns to TNT. Zion Williamson and the Pelicans pay the defending champs, the Toronto Raptors. They pay them a visit, followed by LeBron and Kawhi and the new look Clippers in the Battle of L.A. Check your local listings. Maddox has had his say. Now Acuna at the plate. Braves are back to the top of their order. Third time around now for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Tying run at first. Go ahead and run at the plate. And Acuna 
in the air to left field. Sounded like off the end of the bat, and Ozuna makes a catch. Duvall scampers back to first. And Ozuna clutching at his left side. A last minute stab down to the ground and makes the play. It was like off the bat, he had an awkward read the entire time. He's and he hurting. looked like he's hurt himself. At the very end, he just kind of snatches it off the ground. I don't know if he hurt his back or his side and reaching down for that line drive. He has been a gold glove outfielder in the past with the Marlins, has not been that with the Cardinals. But he does make a good catch on a little bit of a late read. You could understand, though, it's bright out in left field. It's a tough sun field. And Acuna had a big swing, but it sounded like maybe off the end of the bat. And it just died out there in short left. Left field for now is a nightmare. Right field can be a nightmare as well here at Bush Stadium in these late afternoon games. Albies loves to swing first pitch. Tying run at first, and Albies sends one in the air deep to right field. And this one's going to play. This one is going to be gone. Ozzie Albies, a two-run home run. The Atlanta Braves have taken the lead here in St. Louis. It was a three-run ninth inning last night. It's a three-run fifth inning here today as Ozzie Albies, who hit 24 homers during the regular season, delivers a big one here in game four. Two-run blast, Braves on top, and the Cardinals make a pitching change. The left-hander Webb is in. Ozzy Albies, the switch hitter, strikes for a big one here in the fifth inning. Pitching change in game four. Two run shot, Braves on top. Two run shot that gives the Braves the lead in the fifth. We mentioned he likes to swing at that first pitch, caught a hanging slider from Dakota Hudson as Tyler Webb comes in. Tyler Webb is ready to throw. Marcelo Zuna was still having a chat with his center fielder, Dexter Fowler. So Webb ready to go now. Freddie Freeman will bat two outs in the inning and a swing and a miss. Left-handed batters batting only 151 off Webb. That's why he's here to face Freddie. Two outs. And the Braves score again. All three runs yesterday coming with two outs. All three runs in their game two win came with two outs. Giovanna Gallegos in the Cardinal bullpen. And Schilt did not want to bring in Webb to turn Albies around. Albies almost hit 400 this season from the from the right hand batter's box. Kept him left handed. Hits a home run anyway. Carlos Martinez gave it up last night. And a spectator to another three run inning here today as Freeman strikes out. And the inning is over. Ozzy Albies loves hitting at Bush Stadium. Ten career games, hitting all of them prior to today. Now he's got his first postseason homer. Braves on top. Well, the Atlanta Braves have quieted down this big crowd once again. A three-run fifth inning for Atlanta. Ozzy Albies, a two-run home run with two outs. Ah! Dexter Fowler takes a strike. Luke Jackson, remember, came on on the double switch. He and Duvall entered the game. Jackson able to get out of the fourth inning, stranding two. And Fowler hits that one sharply to center field. Acuna's going back at the track and makes the catch. 
Ronald Acuna Jr. flags it down over the shoulder for out number one. I mean, Fowler has hit three balls on the nose this afternoon. Has nothing to show for it. This one right over the head. Got the sunglasses on. Made that play look a lot easier than it was. Such great speed. No ordinary catch right mm. now with the sun in its current position this late afternoon in St. Louis. I mean, just look at the shadow behind him. Gives you an idea of what he's looking at. 4 3 Braves lead it. Bottom of the fifth, and Wong rolls one foul. It's a bonus out for Luke Jackson. There is activity in the Atlanta bullpen, but as long as they can ride Jackson, and you would have to imagine a little bit of redemption here for him. He struggled after the injury to Chris Martin, put in a very difficult position to have to come into the game, warm up in on the game mound That's in front right. of 40 plus thousand. I'm guessing he had thought at least you have to give him the fact that he's he's thinking his window has passed. Yes, he'd warmed up a couple times right. in the game already. They put Martin in the game in the eighth inning. You're thinking that's it. He's forced into action. He struggled. Couldn't finish the inning. Now he gets another chance and he wipes out Colton Wong. A strikeout for Jackson. Out number two gives us a chance to check in with our Atlanta studios and Casey Stern. Good afternoon, Casey. Grinky's postseason struggles here recently continue. Big name acquisition on the trade market by the Astros presenting this incredible starting rotation. Verlander and Garrett Cole doing their part. Grinky struggling today. The scrappy ah. raise. You wonder if the twins getting back into their home ballpark can do the same can force a game four and stave off elimination with the Yankees. One ball one strike to Goldsmith. Well the Rays weren't able to do much against Furlander and Cole in the first two games but no teams have. Furlander and Cole historic seasons this year. Two and one to Goldschmidt misses. I beg your pardon. Yes. Late ring. I jumped him. Two and two the count. Paul Goldschmidt, who never really ever see him argue with the umpire, thought that ball was up. That's a ball. Two and two now. Two outs in the inning. And Goldschmidt fights that one off. The high fastball and that down breaking slider. Goldschmidt homered in the first inning. Hit 34 during the regular season. Has hit his second now as a Cardinal in this postseason. He's got six long balls here in his career. That ball smoked into center field. That's going to get down. Acuna won't run that one down. That'll be at the wall. And Paul Goldschmidt in with a two out double. And a ringing double at that. And more importantly, gets Acuna up the bat. Sorry, gets Ozuna up the bat. Pretty good curveball down by Luke Jackson, covered by Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt now with six hits in the series. Had a double in his final at bat yesterday. And the end of the line for Luke Jackson. O'Day will enter the sidewinder with Ozuna coming up. Braves have a one run lead, but the Cardinals have the tying run on. And the power hitter Ozuna at the plate.
Premier Plays presented by Corona Premier. How about Marcelo Zuna? Launches one off Keiko going back to back with Goldschmidt in the first inning and then does it again. A home run to start the fourth. At that point, it was 3 1 St. Louis. Marcelo Zuna off to a great start in this postseason. Multi hit games in each of the first four. Keiko was trying to get both of those pitches into Ozuna. He did not. Darren O'Day is going to mostly feature pitches away from Ozuna. O'Day, part of a big moment yesterday, came in relief, had a big pickoff, caught stealing of Harrison Bader. Cardinals have Ozuna at the plate with Goldschmidt at second as the tying run. There is a base open at first. And if you're Darren O'Day, how <laughs> aggressive are you going to be with Marcelo Ozuna? Slings one in for a strike. A high strike at that. It all depends on how O'Day gets in the count. If he gets ahead in the count, he's going to go right after Ozuna. If he gets behind, he might pass and want to face Molina. Gets the first pitch strike. No balls in a strike on a Ozuna. And off the end of the bat, he popped him up. Over is Freeman. In front of the Cardinal dugout. He's got it for the out, and the inning is over. Darren O'Day does the job for the Atlanta Braves. Braves hold serve after a two out double. 4 3 Atlanta. So reliable. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile is with you. Tyler Webb continues for the Redbirds. In relief. Of Dakota Hudson. Hudson goes four and two thirds. By the way, they changed that scoring ah. call off the bat of Duvall mm. from a hit to an error on Carpenter. So initially called a hit in an RBI. It'd be an error. Credit Duvall with the RBI, but that makes of the four runs only one earned against Dakota Hudson. They are still on the board, however, and it's 4 3 Atlanta with Donaldson starting it here in the sixth. Donaldson got the rally started last night with a ringing double. One two count and he chased one neck high fastball he fouls it back fouls it straight back <laughs> it means he was on it right That's right. Think of that last inning, right? Not only the error from Matt Carpenter, the double that started from Swanson hit the bag. That was some bad luck to start it for St. Louis. Swanson with his second hit. And then Carpenter took it right in the chest. Ozzy Albies with a two run home run with two outs in the fifth. Two of the three runs scoring with two outs. Albies with three runs batted in here today. Donaldson a wave and a miss. I tell you, Tyler Webb is turning into a dude this year. Guy you can rely on in a breakthrough year in his career. Good change up here. He throws to Donaldson. I mentioned before, left-handers hitting 157 off him. Right in the hitters 189. He's had quite a year. Has found something here in St. Louis after bouncing around. In his career. And now he'll get the lefty Marcakis. Pitcher spot due next. Marcakis swings at the first pitch for the first time all series <laughs> and delivers a base hit. Well, he's been watching those first pitches go by for strikes all series long. He finally lets it loose. And his first base hit. Marcakis now three hits in this division series. And one for three today. Pitcher spot of the order is due up. Francisco Cervelli will be introduced. And as he is announced, Mike Schilt will make a pitching change. So a one-out single sends the wheels in motion for the Cardinals. 
Rebia and Gallegos. And Gallegos will get the call in the sixth inning. Braves lead by a run, 4 3. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. And an Aussie strikes in St. Louis. Ozzy Albies. Three runs batted in for the Braves second baseman. It's his first career postseason home run. 4-3 Atlanta. Now it's Giovanni Gallegos on the pitch for the Cardinals. Big year for Gallegos, especially in the strikeout department. Only allowed seven of 44 inherited runners, inherited runners to score. And he will face Francisco Cervelli. Cervelli pinch hitting. Six spot in the batting order for Atlanta. This is the pitcher spot now. Snedker had the double switch a couple of innings ago. Cervelli only had nine hits for the Braves this season, but eight went for extra bases. One of the pieces that the Braves brought in to uh, just bring some veteran presence. They had some injuries. Alex Anthopoulos deserves a lot of credit. He was able to bolster. The roster with experienced players scouring not just the trade market but the the DFA market the designated for assignment market when you're essentially released by one major league team you become available Cervelli had his choice and he chose the Braves and they're getting a lot out of these players Duvall in this postseason with five RBIs now remember Ortega hit that big grand slam against the Dodgers. Earlier this season, Cervelli and Billy Hamilton and a Danny Echeverria all filled in beautifully. I talked to Alex Anthopoulos the other day, and I was curious about the Cervelli move because, I mean, you're watching games just like I am yeah. this year. Cervelli, that was a case where you're thinking his career might be over because of the concussions. His sixth. Concussion on record, and there was talk that he did not want to catch again, couldn't catch again. He disputed those reports yeah. out of Pittsburgh, said, No, I do want to catch. Where else am I going to play? was his point. <laughs> but he fought his way back, went to AAA with the Pirates, ended up with the Braves, and here he is on a postseason roster. He won a World Series with the New York Yankees. There's Alex Anthopoulos. He's done a terrific job in Atlanta. Sometimes you never know. Those pieces that you add to keep a regular season mm. rolling on the tracks can certainly help in a postseason as well. Cervelli pops it up. Foul territory. Molina and Carpenter over. Molino and the oh. ball bounces between them. That's normally a play for a third baseman. Yeah. But even with Matt Carpenter, who's been around for a long time, the respect level for Molina, but that's a play for Carpenter, and neither one of them come up with it. Carpenter ended up looking like he was just trying to back up Molina. That was his ball all the way. He's needed to call Molina off of that. Mm. He just whiffed. He just kind of got in the way. This is unmolina like. Had that pass ball earlier that put a runner at third base. Two stars of this Cardinal organization for a long time. Not executing right there. Another swing here for Cervelli. And he rolls one foul. Now Snicker trying to be aggressive had Marcakis running. This game started with a bang for the Cardinals. They got back to back homers from Goldschmidt and Ozuna in the first. Braves scored in the third on a sack fly by Albies, but then Ozuna popped another one to make it 3 1 St. Louis after four innings of play. All that changed with a three run fifth. Marcakis goes, and Cervelli will draw the walk. First and second with one away, and the Braves knocking at the door again. Four games today, the two in the National League right here on TBS. And coming up after our game, game four, 
Dodgers Nationals. Dodgers looking to eliminate Washington. Rich Hill will get the ball for L.A. Max Scherzer on the mound for the Nats. E.J., Jeff Francoeur, Alex Chappell will have the call for you right here on TBS. That's the pitcher, Max Fried, running for Savelli. One of the fastest Braves utilizing the full roster. And first and second for Brian McCann. Gives you an idea that Max Fried was not available out of the bullpen today. We talked to Brian Snicker about that before the game. Just curious to know his thinking. And, I mean, the first thing out of his mouth, four out of five days, yeah. to ask it a lot. Usually you don't always get that from a manager. We appreciated that from Snicker. And, but Fried does get in the game as a pinch runner. Right. Won't be available to throw today. At least use his wheels. And he can run. One out. One and oh to McCann. McCann fouls it back. Touch late. Tom Brebbia getting ready in the St. Louis pen. It's a dangerous spot here for the Cardinals. This high-powered Atlanta offense that's done so much damage in the sixth inning or later. They put four on the board in the first five innings, three coming last inning. One ball, one strike. One and two now. Marquez with a one out single. Cervelli walked. And the pinch runner freed. Here's a one two McCann waves and misses guy he goes wipes him out nasty breaking ball McCann is gone out number two first strikeout for Giovanni Gallegos 93 strikeouts this year in the regular season nasty breaking ball there from Gallegos that's the release of this breaking ball right on the seams. Mike Schild using Gallegos in some of the biggest spots, the high pressure spots in the game. This would qualify right here in a 4 3 Atlanta lead. Two on, one out. He gets the K for the second out. Now it's Dansby Swanson with two hits today. Runners in scoring position numbers always tend to drop in the postseason, but those are excessive. Just four for 27 for Atlanta. Dansby Swanson has hits in four consecutive at bats. Two on, two out. And Gallegos wants to start over. Last night, Mike Schilt walked Brian McCann intentionally. Meeting at the mound, discussion, put McCann on to face Swanson, who then doubled off the wall. Swanson did not have a hit against Martinez at that point. Biggest hit of his career. Yeah. Swanson missed the postseason last year due to injury. Here's a 1 0. -oh. That bounces in. Boy, what? Molina? I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> There's nothing he could do there. There's no chance to get in front of it. So he made like an infielder. Catchers who make this play won that one. You see the beating the hands take, by the way. His hands are beat up as well. The pass ball earlier was a costly one. A little redemption right there, though. Still first and second. Two balls, no strikes on Swanson. Mm. Yeah, 
Isn't it funny how a series will turn for an individual? Right now, Swanson is the best hitter going. He and Ozuna. He and Ozuna, but behind Swanson, Adam Duvall. Mm -hmm. The combination of Swanson and Duvall responsible for the win last night for Atlanta. Swanson poor numbers with runners in scoring position all year. There was a lot that led to that confrontation last night, but it's a different story now. 187 was its risk risk numbers this year. That was the third lowest in the major leagues. Two for five though in this series as he's turned it around. Three balls and a strike. Markakis and Max Freed on the base paths. Freed the pinch runner. Three and one. And that misses. Ball four. Or did he? So the bases are loaded now. Decision time for Mike Schilt. Duval coming up. Schilt's going back to his bullpen. Brevia coming in. It's right handed for right handed, but Brebby is the guy that can keep the ball in the ballpark. With Duval coming up, a big power threat. Going with a sinker baller. So Brebby will enter. Gallegos is out. The Braves trying to knock the door down here. Cardinals National League Division Series on TBS. Atlanta gets a home run from Ozzy Albies. Two run blast to put him on top in the fifth inning. Now they threaten with the bases loaded. And John Brebbia is on to pitch for St. Louis. Probably trying to match Brebbia's good breaking ball against the good fastball hitting Duval. Marcakis freed. And Swanson on the bases. Freed the pinch runner for Cervelli. And here is Adam Duvall back at another big spot in this series. He takes strike one. He told Lauren after his big home run in game two, you just never know when you're going to get a chance to come up in a moment. And he has had three in a row here for the Atlanta Braves. Credited with an RBI his last time up, hit that shot off the chest of Carpenter. It was an error, but it allowed a run to score. And a swing and a miss. Nasty slider from Brebbia. Good pitch. Crowds up, huge out here for the Cardinals. Could be a turning point. Yes. The Cardinals come back and win this game. You'll look right here. 0 2 hit last night from Duvall. The 0 2 pitch. Duvall trying to jump on top of one, fouls it away. Count remains no balls and two strikes. Five RBIs with no starts in this series. Had to go back to the Reds. Mark Lewis back in 95 to find one with that kind of production off the bench. They are loaded up with two away. Still 0 2 on Duvall. Checked no. it. One and two now. We talked about Duvall spending a lot of the year in Triple A Gwinnett, but 2016 and 17 with Cincinnati, 64 home runs, 200, 202 RBI. Was an All Star 2016 from the Giants to the Reds, ending up with the Braves. 
been a huge piece for Atlanta thus far. Bases loaded, two outs. The one-two pitch. And a swing at him as Brevia strikes him out. Big out for Brevia and the Cardinals. The Braves strand them loaded. St. Louis down a run. Coming to bat. Wheels are charted here in St. Louis. It is 4-3. The Braves got a two-run home run from Ozzy Albies in the fifth to take the lead now. Sean Newcomb is on to pitch. No well, Max Freed available today, Ronnie. Newcomb yeah. is the last lefty for the Braves. We we'll probably want to get multiple innings out of Newcomb here this afternoon. Big power arm from the left side. You got 12 outs to get. You start counting outs if you're Brian Snitker. 12 outs to get. The pitchers you want to use if you maintain this lead is it Newcomb and Green and Melanson. So someone is going to have to go extend it here at some point. As Newcomb fires a strike in there. 0 and 2 on Molina. Fastball, big curveball from Newcomb. Who had a breakout season really last year as a starter. Started off slow, went to Triple A this year, came back as a power arm out of the bullpen. On the ground, got it on his hands. Molina rolls to Swanson, and there is out number one. Molina now two for 15 in the series, one gone in the sixth. We remind you that this MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Ut Snacks, the crunch that connects us all, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There's a three run fifth. Ozzy Albies put Atlanta on top. Two out, two run home run. Off Dakota Hudson, the last batter Hudson faced. Both teams into their bullpens now. Carpenter committing an error at third base. His second consecutive start. It's been good at the plate for St. Louis. Pinch hit RBI single in game one. Sack fly yesterday. Hit a bullet his first time up today. Lined out to right. And then he walked his last time. Thirty six home runs last year for Carpenter only 15 this year. Ah! After signing that big extension with the Cardinals 42nd postseason game. Top 10 all time in club history. He's ninth actually ties the wizard Ozzy Smith who is in the ballpark mm. today. Two balls and a strike. Big swing and a miss. 97 with the fastball from Newcomb. Definitely an uptick in his stuff when he went to the bullpen. Newcomb made three starts this year, then sent down. Came back three weeks later. It's always about command with Newcomb. If he's throwing strikes, he's as good Sorry. as anyone down there. He's got closer stuff. Those are the numbers. Starter versus reliever. When he was a starter, always compared to like a young John Lester. Same kind of body type. He joined that group, the three hired guns, in August and September. And he was right there with him as one of the best pitchers in the pen. Carpenter rolls out, two gone in the inning. Two up, two down, two weekly hit ground balls. Off of Newcomb. And that's going to bring in Tommy Edmond now. This is where it comes into focus now. The Cardinals offense. They scored one run in 18 innings in this series. They couldn't complete a one nothing win yesterday. Giving up three in the ninth. But the uh, the Cardinals offense has been in the crosshairs all year long. Performed better in the second half. This Braves pitching staff has kept them down. It's Helsley getting ready. Looks like he'll have the seventh. Braves will be at the top of their order in the seventh. Is he a one? One ball, one strike. Shane Green 
lightly tossing in the Atlanta bullpen. He's been used in multi inning outings as well this year since coming to Atlanta. Popped him up, got in on his hands. Routine pop up to Freddie Freeman, and how about that? Newcomb just wipes the Cardinals out. One, two, three. Three weekly hit balls in the sixth. We go to the seventh. Top of the order coming up for Atlanta. 4 3, Braves lead. Dodgers Nats on FS1, game three of the Yankees Twin Series, and then tomorrow on FS1 at 4 p.m. Eastern, game four Astros Rays, followed by Yankees oh. Twins if necessary. As Fowler missed that ball, he lost it in the sun, and now Acuna all the way around to third base. We've been talking all afternoon about the late afternoon here in St. Louis. It is as tough as it gets for these big league outfielders, and Fowler just lost it. He just got a, a bad jump to start, then tried to make up for it, and then seemed to lose it again as he was trying to come in for the dive. So he's missed it. Now he kind of picks it up, but it's too late for him to get there on time. And it goes under his glove. Oh, as he all, uh, Cunha, I should say, thinking it. That's a routine out. Now he's got to get on his horse. He should know he's the center fielder. Albies on the first pitch, a shot off of Wong, who recovers and throws him out. Acuna stayed put at third base. So Albies, who hit the two run homer in the fifth on the first pitch, rolls out here for out number one. Well, with no, well, it's really nothing that Acuna Jr. could do there. He didn't know that. Uh, Wong was going to bobble that ball that was right at him. Right at him. Keeps it in front. Cunha Jr. was thinking of going, but then went back to third. Keep in mind, Wong has a very strong throwing arm as well. So Mike Schilt is going to make another pitching change. Brebbia, who got out of that bases loaded jam in the sixth, will exit with a runner at third. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, they have scored that as a sun triple for now on Acuna. Gives him his third hit of the game. Big lefty Andrew Miller is coming in. Another big spot for a Cardinal reliever trying to keep this at a 4-3 Braves lead. With one out, Acuna's the runner at third base. Braves trying to add to their lead, and now Miller will get the ball here in the seventh. Well, he'll get the ball to try to strike out Freddie Freeman with the lefty, a lefty matchup. We got Freeman coming up. Donaldson to follow. Brebbia did a terrific job to get out of a mess in the sixth inning. They brought him on to face Duvall. He struck him out with the bases loaded. Fowler losing. A fly ball in the sun scored as a triple on Brebbia's line. And Acuna at third base with one away. Infield is in. Creeping halfway in. A little more than halfway in from the shortstop to Young. 
Acuna with great speed over third. And Freeman, who has been swinging and missing often in this series, in a spot where you need contact, preferably for the Braves, contact to the outfield. It won't take much to get Acuna home. 4 3 Atlanta, seventh inning. Freeman fouls it away. One and one the count. Freddie Freeman had a monster year driving in runs. 121 RBIs this year. Miller deals and a swing and a miss. One and two the count. Freeman has struck out twice. Those are the outfield assists. It would take a very uh, short fly ball to be able to throw out Acuna Jr. Worst arm in that group is in left field in Ozuna. Tough sun field, center field as you've seen, and now right field. Here's the one two and a swing and a miss. Miller strikes him out. When he needed a K, Miller gets one on Freddie Freeman. Two gone in the inning. Well, Miller stayed with the breaking ball perfectly placed outside and on the knees. And now Miller will face Josh Donaldson. No, he won't. No, he They'll won't. intentionally yeah. walk him. So that will put runners at first and third. The lefty Markakis coming up. Inning started with his Acuna Sun triple. Right off the end of the bat. He looked like he was, we thought for a moment he was clutching at his hip or maybe his oblique. I think maybe just bees in the hand. That's right? right, after hitting the ball off the end. Because once he started running, he was at full speed and there he's shaking it off. Scored as a triple to start the inning. He's been a third. Since there were no outs, now there are two outs. First and second. Markakis swings at the first pitch for the second consecutive at bat. Fouls it away. Lead off triple score about 87% of the time. Miller, two thirds of the way home. It's a big strikeout of Freddie Freeman. Markakis. Singled his last time up. Almost mm. hit him. Josh Tomlin in the Atlanta pen. So that would be the wild card in the late game high leverage scenario for Brian Snitker. Tomlin has not appeared in this series. Newcomb was dominant in the sixth inning. It makes you wonder if Tomlin is in there in case the Braves bust it open, or is he coming in regardless? Normally, when relievers are warming up with his team at bat, he's coming in. That's right. First and third, two outs, two balls and a strike on Markakis. And he lays mm. off, and now it's three and one. The Braves left the bases loaded last inning. Had them loaded with two outs, had two on with one out. And the Cardinal bullpen, the best in the National League this year, held serve, put the zero up. Got him at the corners. Three and one. Markakis draws the walk. The Cardinal bullpen is quiet. This is Miller's inning the rest of the way. Now the bases are loaded again for the second consecutive inning. Got that pitcher spot for Atlanta due up next. And it's going to be a Danny Echeverria to bat. Tomlin was up if they ever got to the pitcher's spot because they were going to bat Echeverria for Newcomb. I think if he retires Marquez, Newcomb might, might have stayed in the game. Right. Yep, now, 
Echevarria will hit for the pitcher Newcomb. Got an ad bad last night. Struck out. Finished the game at third base. Atlanta hit 330 this year with the bases loaded. That was second to the Colorado Rockies. Those are Echevarria's numbers. Known as a great glove. Not known for his bat. No balls and a strike with two outs. They are loaded. Echevarria takes a strike. 0 and 2 the count. This one framed perfectly by Molina. Another game breaking moment. Brebbia struck out Duvall with the bases loaded last inning. Now Miller against Echeverria. Here's the 0-2. Echeverria sends one deep into left field. Ozuna is back and he's got it. Oh, I thought he jumped him. It dies at the wall. He must have just missed it on the barrel. It had the look and the sound, but Miller says, whew, he's out of it. Bases left stranded. Center. The base is loaded. The Braves have left six men on the last two innings. And now the wild card in the bullpen with Max Fried not available. Josh Tomlin is on to pitch the seventh. Appeared in 51 games, started one for the Braves this season. Had some good years as a starter in Cleveland. Power hitter Paul DeYoung leads off. And Tomlin ah. making his first appearance of this postseason. 34 years of age. And DeYoung in the air left center field. Sunfield and calling is Duvall. He makes the play. I don't think Acuna ever saw it. <laughs> and he was asking for help. He gets it. Duvall puts it away for out number one. We check in with Casey Stern in our Atlanta studios. All right, thanks, Casey. See if the Nats can survive for another day and send that series back to Los Angeles. Randy Arozarena will pinch hit for ah. the Cardinals here. Take strike one from Tomlin. Tomlin, you'll see a lot of cutting fastballs and a good curveball. Shane Green gets up, I think for the third time. One ball, one strike, and a wave and a miss. Curveball from Tomlin. Helsey continues to throw in the St. Louis bullpen. Tomlin arriving to the Braves late in the spring with was with Milwaukee this spring and didn't look like a path for him in the big leagues with the Brewers so he signed with Atlanta had an out in his deal has been a reliable reliever out of their bullpen throws the bat at it to Rosarena that's a Swing and a miss. Rosarina is not running. He's he, he thinks he's he made contact. Ball. Yeah, he, he thinks he's saying he made contact. Jim Wolf is not hearing it. Foul tips aren't reviewable. That's a strikeout. Strikeout secured at first base. Core ball in the dirt. Throws the bat at it. Did he hit it off the end? Too hard to tell. Got to run. Not reviewable anyway. That's right. Always. Just run and then clean it up after. Two outs. Tomlins come in throwing strikes. To Young and a Rosarena retired. Back to the top of the order now. Dexter Fowler. Fowler just one for 15 in the series. 
has one walk in the series. He's 0 for his last 11. Hit the ball sharply his last time up, but that one a slow roller to Albies, and that's the inning. Those are three big outs from Josh Tomlin in his NLDS debut here in game four. We march to the eighth, 4 3, Braves lead. Atlanta Braves have had a couple of chances to put this game away, but the Cardinal bullpen, best in the National League this year. Big strikeout of Duvall with the bases loaded. Echeverria with a long fly ball out with the bases loaded. Atlanta has left six on. You know, we talked earlier that the Cardinals really needed to add on, and then once the Braves took the lead, will that hurt them not getting a run out of those two bases loaded situations? Ryan Helsley will take over out of that St. Louis bullpen. He'll face Brian McCann to start it. Braves are 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position today. The Cardinals are 0 for 5. Elsley got an out, gave up a hit in game one. It'll be McCann, Swanson, and Duvall coming up for Atlanta. And Josh Tomlin, three up, three down, seventh inning. The Atlanta bullpen has retired seven straight now. Dallas Keiko got the start, went three and a third. And Brian Snitker has been using that pen freely, and even without Max Fried, who pinch ran in this game. Tomlin's sitting on the bench there as if he's going back mm. out. That is not the posture of a pitcher who is done for the day. McCann takes a ball. Looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth, you've got Wong, Goldschmidt, and Ozuna, Green, and Melanson. Would be the two pitchers to keep your eye on at this point. Figure Tehran is the long man at this point. Makes you wonder if Melanson might be down today or if Green, you don't know. It's a little unusual maybe, that. Maybe Green's going to close. Tomlin will go another one. Tomlin has 51 appearances this year. 20 times went more than two innings. Two innings or more. McCann strikes out. Helsley picks up a K, his first batter faced. Hey, a reminder authentic on field caps, tees, jerseys, hoodies, and more. You can get all your division series gear and suit up with your team at the official source, MLBShop.com. Ryan Helsley will face Dansby Swanson now. With one away in the eighth, let's check in with Lauren. She's got more on Swanson. Yeah, B.A., he went first overall to Arizona in that 2015 draft. We know the pressure that comes along with that. He was traded to the Braves December of 2015, missed last year's postseason due to that torn ligament in his left hand. Brian Snicker told me he loves his growth. Dansby thrives off pressure, and he thinks it's a result of so much of it at a young age. It's easy to get lost in this lineup, and Dansby always sticks out. College World Series champion, national champion with Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt back in 2014. They were the runner ups in 2015. He came to the professional game. Remember, he's the 1 1. 1 1. So <laughs> the 1 1 is the not only the first rounder, but the first pick in the first round. That uh, carries its own burdens and expectations of success. He has been terrific in this postseason. Swanson is two for two with a walk today. Had the game tying double yesterday. Three occasions mm. yesterday. He banged one through over 100 miles an hour. Twice he hit the wall. Center field fence in his first at bat yesterday. Then he hammered one through the hole between short and third at 100 miles an hour. Exit velocity. And then he ripped one off the left field fence. For the game tying RBI double. Skipped one off a bag today, third base bag. Well placed base <laughs> hit today, right? For his his double. He got him. Foul tip into the middle of Molina. Strikeout for Helsley. Back to back K's. Two men are out in the eighth. Good fastball here by Helsley. More like a cutting action on that ball. 
Ryan Helsley, I'm sure he's glad to be back on the mound. He was in the news. He's a member of the Cherokee Nation. He was asked by Cardinal beat writer Derek Gould mm -hmm. about his thoughts about the tomahawk chop. And he it was a good question, important question, and he had a very thoughtful ah. answer. He's not looking for controversy, Helsley, but he offered a very thoughtful opinion of it. He it said it's the misconception of us as Native Americans and how we're perceived, and he took exception to it. The second outing in this NL DS. Well, there's nothing wrong with that arm. Just bringing it right now. 0 and 2 the count on Duvall. Oklahoma native Ryan Helsley trying to put the Braves down one two three here in the eighth inning and he misses 99 mile an hour fastball Third plate appearance for Duvall. Drove in a run on an air by Carpenter in the fifth. He struck out his last time up. With the bases loaded. Here's a one two. And he got him. Helsley strikes out the side of the eighth. Wipeout stuff. Nasty curve. Triple digit fastball. Strikes out McCann, Swanson, and Duval to end the inning. Cardinals coming up. Rangers Nationals, Rich Hill against Max Scherzer. If our game goes past the 6:30 hour Eastern, that game will begin on TNT. We're on TBS. And this one coming right down to the wire. Colton Wong swings at the first pitch from Josh Tomlin. Four outs for Josh Tomlin. He's retired four in a row. The last two have been on the ground. And that's all Brian Snitker is going to ask out of Tomlin. Had some playoff starts for the Cleveland Indians. He pitched for the Indians a couple of times in the postseason two years ago. But he gives the Braves four outs down the stretch with a one run lead and job well done Josh Tom and they're going to ask Shane Green to get the two biggest outs with Goldschmidt and Ozuna coming up all star closer with the Tigers the hired gun with the Braves at the trade deadline Shane Green will enter we'll set him up after this and by taco game four National League Division Series Braves Cardinals one out here in the eighth inning. Brian Snitker will call on Shane Green now with Goldschmidt and Ozuna coming up. Sometimes it feels as though the save comes in the eighth inning, not the ninth, as Green tries to get to past the two powerful hitters of the Cardinals. Goldschmidt and Ozuna went back to back home runs in the first inning. Got this game four started in the Cardinals' favor. Ozuna's hit two home runs today. One run game, 4 3 Atlanta. Took the lead with a three run fifth. And Green misses down and away. You see a lot of sliders from Green. He was fourth in the American League with 22 saves when he was with the Tigers before he was traded. Made the All Star team. Green pitched in game one. He pitched the sixth inning in that game, pitched a scoreless six. Gave up a hit and a walk. He gave up a double to Ozuna in game one last Thursday as Goldschmidt Ow. takes a strike. Braves bullpen currently eight consecutive scoreless innings in this series. Braves bullpen has retired eight straight batters now. Tomlin just put down four in a row. Here's a 1-1. One, one. One and two the count. Green with that minuscule ERA in Detroit. 22 saves as a 30 year old. 
trip to the Midsummer Classic as an American League All-Star for the first time as a 30-year-old. Struggled when he first came to Atlanta and then righted the ship. One ball, two strikes. Green gave up five earned runs in his first three games as a Brave, including a blown save. Participating in his first postseason, like Melanson and Martin, once the calendar turned to the second week of August, they all locked it in. And the Braves ran away with the NL East. They clinched the division on September 20th. And they turned a weakness into a strength in the bullpen with those pieces. It's a dangerous bat due next. And he is hot. Ozuna, he is confident as well. Green has not thrown one pitch inside the Goldschmidt, but allowing him to kind of creep over that outside corner. This bullpen streak goes back to game two. Two and two the count. And Goldschmidt breaks his bat. That is going to fall. Base hit. Down into the corner it goes. And Goldschmidt on his way to second with a double. It's a one out double for Paul Goldschmidt. And the Cardinals have the tying run at second. Well, he finally did come inside with a fastball that broke the bat of Goldschmidt, but he's so strong. Hits it down the line. Left fielder Duval was playing him to left center. So the hustle of Goldschmidt gets him a double. Thinking double all the way. He runs well. And Goldschmidt stands at second base as the tying run. Bottom of the eighth. Here comes the Cardinals' hottest hitter, Marcel Ozuna. Cards have six hits, five of them, from Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Two hits against Shane Green, one of those a homer. Green. One a double in game one. That was the first bat of Green faced in the sixth inning of game one. Cardinals with a chance here. Long ball puts him ahead. Green deals. Ozuna backs ah. out and takes a strike. He didn't like it. Remember, Ozuna was rung up yesterday by Melanson. A strikeout in that ninth inning. Got a favorable call. That one goes against him here. I, th I thought Azuna was right. The ball looked down. St. Louis 3 for 26 with runners in scoring position this series. Two home runs today for Ozuna. Both pulled into deep left. And that one missed. Sharp slider by Green. Carlos Martinez, Cardinal closer, preparing. Braves stranded the bases loaded in the sixth and the seventh on offense and then Helsley an impressive three up three down eighth with three strikeouts now the Cardinals are knocking at the door St. Louis led three one at one point after Ozuna second homer in the fourth. See the pitchers occasionally checking a card in their back pocket. That's letting them know what sign they're using with the runner on second. Now Green's ready. Look at Ozuna at the plate. He's waving that back. One ball, one strike. Here he comes. And a swing and a miss. Ozuna let it rip, but he missed. A middle middle fastball from Green. It's interesting. Green really sets up his fastball with his slider. Throws a lot of sliders, so occasionally will 
throw it by him. Wonder what he thought when that left his hand. <laughs> He's hit his first two home runs in the postseason, participating in his first postseason, Ozuna. Confidence is sky high right now. The one two and a cold strike three. Ozuna is rung up as Green punches him out for the second out of the inning. Well, pitch sequence really got one here on that first call ball. Looked down, and then after that, did not get the slider. Fastball, he threw right by him, and I think he just got caught guessing slider. And that ball hit the outside corner. Comeback sinker, Green rings the bell. It's a huge out. And now it's Molina. Tying run at second base. And Molina shoots one to right off the glove of Freeman. In the score is Goldschmidt. And this game is tied. Well, fastball away to Molina. Almost looked like there were two broken back hits in that inning and just over the head of the six, five inch tall Freddie Freeman. Molina swings it to first pitch almost 48% of the time. And he drives in the tying run. Ambushed in that time. Molina delivers for the Cardinals in the postseason again. All tied at four. What a moment for Yadier Molina. Two outs. Molina carries the go ahead run. Here is Matt Carpenter with plenty of thunder in that bat. Don't forget the hustle double by Goldschmidt, too. Ah! High strike on the breaking ball from Green. Goldschmidt with the double. Broken bat double down the left field line. And Molina drives him in. Braves' inability to add on costs him. Cardinals know that story from last <laughs> night. It's going to be a final at bat win for someone here in game four. We know that. Carpenter is 0 for 2 with a walk, and he takes a strike. No balls, two strikes on Matt Carpenter. Looking ahead to the Atlanta ninth. They'll have the top of their order coming up. He's had better control of that fastball than he has of his sign signature pitch, the slider. Carpenter had a game tying hit in game one against Melanson. Had a little flare down the left field line. It was a single. Sacrifice fly at an RBI yesterday. Lined out his first time up, then he walked. Last time up, he grounded back to the mound. Green having a hard time getting on the same page with McCann. Still going multiple sides yeah. here, even with no runner at second base. See what he has in mind. No balls, two strikes. Carpenter takes a cold strike three. He got him. Green with the ring up. It ends the inning. Two Ks for Shane Green. But a Goldschmidt double, then a Yadier Molina game tying RBI single. 4-4 game, ninth inning. Here we go. 
we have going here after Yadier Molina ties this game with a two-out RBI single. Think about the two hits for the Cardinals in that inning. Goldschmidt's left the bat at 69 miles an hour exit velo. Molina's left the bat at 63 miles an hour. It's not how hard you hit them, it's where you hit them. Together they produce the run. It's all a no. And this game is tied, and Carlos Martinez is on the mound for St. Louis as we go to the ninth and the top of the order coming up. We asked Mike Schultz if he was afraid to use Martinez today because of all the work yesterday. He said back-to-back -back days, he usually has better control. He's going to get that chance. This game provides you moments of redemption. And for Martinez, who has had two poor outings, he will face Ronald Acuna Jr. to start this ninth inning. 4-4 Cardinals trying to survive another day and get to a game five. And the Braves, ah! they're trying to punch a ticket to the NLCS as Martinez starts him with strike one. Acuna credited with a sun triple in the seventh. He's got three hits. And he had a monster home run off Martinez in game one. Part of that furious comeback by Atlanta. See where this missed. Molina was angry that they didn't get the strike there. Here's a 1 1. Little half swing. They'll ask. He goes. Unable to check his swing. And now it's 1 and 2 on Acuna. Good call by Tom Hallion. See what Martinez goes with here a ball and two strikes. Martinez gave up three runs last night. Blown save and he misses inside. He took the mound of the ninth inning with a one nothing lead. Dansby Swanson with two outs drove in a run to tie it with a double. And then Duvall had the two RBI single to put the Braves ahead. Here's a 2-2. And Acuna sends one into left field on the run. Ozuna, he's at the track. Ozuna can make the play. And it bounces out for a ground rule double. Ronald Acuna with his fourth hit of the game. And now the Braves have the go-ahead run in scoring position. Shows you how much power Acuna Jr. has. He hit that off the end of the bat. If he'd have caught all that, that would have been out of the ballpark. And Ozuna could never get over there in time. Slides in vain to try to make the play. Might be fortunate he didn't glove the ball. Mm. You could see a scenario that glances off the glove. Acuna's going to be at third base. Instead, it's a ground rule double. Cardinal sacrifice from defense in left field with Ozuna. Could not run that one down as Albies takes a ball. Ozzy Albies has been the man of the hour for the Braves today. He's driven in three runs, hit a go ahead two run homer in the fifth. I like Snicker giving his three best hitters three chances to drive in this run. And a wave and a miss. Ozzie Albee's first career postseason homer back in the fifth inning. After a sack fly in the third. Has two hits against Martinez in his career. Two for six. Outfield is deep with Albee's at the plate. Anything that hits the outfield grass, Acuna is going to be able to score the go-ahead run. Got a freeze on a line drive. He was doubled up earlier in this series. A leadoff double by Ronald Acuna. His fourth hit of the game. From the 21-year-old to the 22-year-old. The 2-1. Albies takes a ball. Three balls and a strike now with Freddie Freeman due next. Freeman has struggled. Struck out three times a day and bounced into a double play. Miles Michaelis, the game one starter in the pen. 
Albies on a 3 1, fouls it away. That'll be in the seats. Mike Schilt trusting his closer has been great for him all year. Wasn't the plan that Martinez was going to be the closer this year. Jordan Hicks injured. Martinez stepped into that role, but he has given up a bunch of runs already in this series. Two outings, three runs apiece. Six runs allowed, seven outs recorded for Carlos Martinez. Here's a 3 2. Do it again. First pitch swinging by Ozzy Albies in the sixth. Gets a hanging cutter slider from Hudson. Last batter Dakota Hudson faced. Right. Albies knocked him out with that go ahead home run. That was a three run fifth inning for Atlanta. Right. Cardinals had a 3 1 lead when that inning started. 4 4 game, ninth inning. Acuna the runner at second. Here it comes. Martinez. Albies in the air. A little pop up. Back is DeYoung. He'll make the call and the catch. And a big out for Martinez. Acuna has to stay put. One gone in the ninth. And a hot hitter retired. And now Freddie Freeman. Will bat Mike Maddox the pitching coach steps out of the dugout now he turns around counting yeah. mound visits here yeah go Get, ahead getting instructions from his manager you have to count the mound visits these days Cardinals actually ran out of mound visits in game two well obviously it can't be a, a, a scouting visit everyone knows Freddie Freeman although Freddie today is having a tough day right are you looking at the Freddie Freeman on the baseball card no. in the media guide or the Freddie Freeman we've seen here in this series remember he did take Martinez deep in game one that was a long homer 460 foot home run into the fountain in center field but he has not done much in this series game one at this point was a two run game and Freddie Freeman made it a one run game with that solo blast. But he has come up empty often in this game four here today. He struck out three times. Yeah, eight swing and misses for Freeman this afternoon. 30 go ahead RBIs though. Numbers <laughs> on both sides. That's right. So Maddox has had his say. And now Freddie Freeman with the go-ahead run at second. Martinez deals and a swing and a miss. Martinez likes to attack the lefties with the change. Remember he struck out Nick Marquez yesterday in that ninth inning. Here's the 0 1. And a strike in there. 0 oh, 2 the count on Freeman. Let's see what he has in mind 0 2. Martinez deals. Freeman on the ground. Wong out there in the grass. And he'll make the play for out number two. Acuna to third base. But there are two outs in the ninth. It's Donaldson who started that rally yesterday against Martinez coming up now. Hit a bullet. Hit a double yesterday. It was pinch run for by Hamilton. So Mark Melanson, the right-hander to the right. And then you got Julio Tehran. Added to this postseason roster after game one. All tied at four. Two outs now in the inning after a leadoff double. Martinez facing Josh Donaldson. And he pops him up. 
Big swing on the first pitch. Ozuna will camp. And he's got it. And Martinez survives a leadoff double. This game, this series, to the bottom of the ninth we go. Presented by Utz. What a game this has been. Cardinals jumped out early. Two runs on back-to-back -back homers in the first. Goldschmidt and Ozuna. Ozuna made it 3-1 with a home run in the fourth. Ozzie Albies put the Braves on top in the fifth. A three-run fit for Atlanta. Now the Cardinals have tied it on Molina's RBI single with two outs in the eighth. And Green, who gave up the tying run in the eighth, stays in the ball game. This crowd just buzzing right now, <laughs> sensing a moment. Tommy Edmond, who's given them so many moments this year, gets the first at bat of this bottom of the ninth inning. Been on the ba been on base twice with a hit and a walk. Had a double as a right-handed batter in the second inning, Edmond. And he swings and rips one into center field. A base hit. Wasting no time. Tommy Edmond with a single to start the ninth. Hardest hit ball off of Shane Green by the Cardinals thus far. Just first pitch hitting by Edmond. A bullet to center field. This kid's a player. He is a player. He is a gamer. A couple of hits in game one. Two more hits here in game four. On base for the third time, and he can run. Mike Schilt got a lot of questions this morning about why he didn't bunt, bunt DeYoung. Doubt he'll do it again. He'd rather DeYoung <laughs> knock out another letter in Big Mac land. <laughs> And he does square, and he bunts it foul out of play. Wow. I think that's more newsworthy than yeah, not I, bunting. I agree. I just wonder if DeYoung did that on his own. After watching uh, that attempt, I would not allow him to bunt again. I'll I mean, tell you that. We talked to Mike Shield about this before the game. He goes, he's, he hadn't done it. Hasn't done it all year. I'm not sure he can get a bunt down. That was a surprise. See if he squares again. No balls and a strike on DeYoung, who's 0 for 3 today. No bunt this time, but he takes a ball. You can't have him bunt after that attempt on the first one. I can't wait to hear what <laughs> Schilt has to say after this one. I'm very curious to know if he just tried to bunt on his own. And that was removed from the equation. DeYoung hit 30 homers this year. Matt Weeders on deck. That's a pitcher spot due next. Winning run at first base in the speedy Edmund. And there he goes. And DeYoung swings and a liner in the right field. Marcakis will make the play. Edmund scurries back. The throw comes in. It hits Edmund. Now near the Cardinal dugout. Edmund on his way to second. A wild ride. But the Cardinals get the potential winning run in scoring position. But to charge that error to Marcakis. Okay, that was close. Freeman was going to take a shot to try to pick it and get the double play. Well, first, Edmonds running on the play. A ball hit pretty hard to right field by DeYoung. Once Edmond locates the ball, he retreats back to first, but he was all the way to second. Marquez got a good arm, and the play was going to be close. That's why Freddie took a shot. Edmund didn't allow Freeman to go around him to the outfield yeah. side to make that pick. And I think the ball hit Edmund. Yeah, it yes, did. Yes, it did. In the leg. I mean, that was a perfect throw from Marquez, but he's going to draw the air on this. Interesting, Freddie Olson on the other side right. of the bag, right? That's a big play. Tommy Edmond 
running with the pitch. Did he touch the bag yes. on the way back? Yes, he did. He stepped back on second yeah. on his way back. You have to do that. And if Freddie was on the outside, might have had a chance to double him up at first. All right, so an error. And now Edmund at second base, carrying the winning run. And the switch hitter, Matt Wieters, will bat for the Cardinals. Oh! Seen Wieters on deck a couple of occasions. First at bat of this NLDS, and he's got a chance to be the star here and walk it off for the Redbirds. The backup catcher to Yadier Molina is hardly seen. He is in a bright light right now. Matt Wieters, the 0-1. Duvall, a cannon in right, excuse me, in left. Acuna, cannon in center. You've seen Marquecas' arm. It's the worst of the three arms, but it's still a good throwing arm and very accurate. A great speed on second, though, with Edmund. Readers pinch hitting, down on the count, 0-2. Green deals and a swing and a fly ball to right. Markek is coming in. Edmund will tag and he'll stop. And the second out of the inning, Shane Green gets the fly out to right on Weeders. Two gone. Back to the top of the order. Two postseason walk-offs in elimination games. David Freeze, that magical home run in 2011 in game six in Texas and a World Series title Cardinals have had eight walk offs in the postseason in their history so the man from Georgia Tech Matt Wieters flies out now the man from Milton Georgia is at the plate in Dexter Fowler trying to send this one back to his hometown. Shane Green. Two outs in the ninth in a 4-4 game. Here he comes and Fowler takes a ball. Miles Michaelis will be next if there is a next. Leaders pinch hit for Carlos Martinez. So if there is a 10th inning, Michaelis will have it. Mark is due to lead off in the 10th for Atlanta. And a pinch hitter and then McCann. Fowler is 0 for 4. Took the collar yesterday. 0 for 8 in this portion of the series here in St. Louis. He has been a struggling hitter. 8 for his last 69. But he'll tell you that means one more at bat to a base hit. They're both trying to freeze each other here, Green and Fowler. What's interesting about the shift that Atlanta is in, you can see that Albies has played over. But to keep Edmund close at second base, Swanson's really right behind the bag. There is some room between all B's and Swanson. One ball, no strikes on Fowler. Edmund carries the winning run. Fowler fouls it into the net. One and one the count. Started the day talking about the top two in the Cardinal order, setting the table for Goldschmidt and Ozuna, who have been good. Not a table setting situation here. Fowler in a run producer spot. Chance to send the Cardinals and Braves to a game five. Here's a 1 1. And McCann smothered it. 
Two and one now on Fowler. McCann just lost it for a second. Smothers it down in front of him. Thought he kicked it. Mm, he almost so he's looking it. for it. And then finally comes back to Edmund. Couldn't take the chance. Green's got the one he wants. Two balls and a strike with two outs. And Fowler trying to shoot one to the opposite field. He fouls it away two and two now. Bounce back here for Fowler this year. Struggled last year, was injured. Had a broken left foot. Ended his season in August. Has had a rough series. But he has got a chance right now to deliver in a big way for St. Louis. Shane Green against Dexter Fowler. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Edmund will be off of the crack of the bat. And that one is down and it almost hit him. That hard slider down and in. You're right. Just skips out of the way. And the backhand play by McCann. Called Wong do next. Right now it's Fowler and Green. Full count, two outs. Here he comes and Fowler down the right field line. That is a foul ball. Oh, he knew it right off the bat. You could see the expression of Dexter Fowler. Palms up saying why. Why was I too quick? Hits the ball oh. right on the nose. Oh. He knew it. As soon as it left the bat. Hmm. Foul. Reaction on the bench. So we do it again. What a game. What a spot here in game four. Another 3 2 pitch with two outs from Shane Green. And Fowler swings and misses. Green survives. Shane Green sends us to extra innings in St. Louis. Tied at four. Dexter Fowler strikes out to end the ninth. We play on at Bush Stadium. What a thrilling series this has been. And now Miles Michaelis, the game one starter, will in fact pitch in this game, but he is going to have the 10th inning. In fact, he has never pitched in relief in a Cardinal uniform. Last time he pitched in relief, in 2013 for the San Diego Padres. Cardinals won game one, 7 6 in Atlanta. Braves came back, shut out the Cardinals in game two, 3 0. It was a three run ninth inning for the Braves yesterday in game three and a 3 1 victory. And here we are in game four, all tied at four. A Braves win, they would advance to the NLCS. A Cardinal win. We'll rack it up on Wednesday in Atlanta for game five. The Braves have had a leadoff triple and double from Acuna Jr. and have not scored. And they also stranded the bases loaded in back to back wow. innings as Marquez takes a strike. Remember the pitcher spot is due next for Atlanta. It's still sitting in the sixth spot in the batting order. Rafael Ortega has moved on deck. As Marquez lifts one of the air, left center field, got some carry. Fowler's on the run at the track. He'll make the play. Nick Marquez gave it a ride, but out number one here in the 10th. 
Don't have to deal with the sun anymore. These outfielders. Fowler lost a fly ball in the sun off the bat of Acuna. That went for a triple. Covered some ground, he, didn't he? He really did, and that's probably the deepest part of this ballpark there in left center. All right, so a pinch hitter, Rafael Ortega. Ortega was part of one of the signature moments of the year in the regular season in Atlanta. The game Acuna was taken out for not hustling. Ortega hit a grand slam against the Los Angeles Dodgers that day and a Braves win. There are moments throughout the regular season as you call those benchmark moments of Dustin May and he launched one out on August 18th. Had a great season in Triple A this year. Wait for a moment like this your entire life. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. And Ortega now two and two. Michaelis had plenty of time to warm up. I would imagine that'd be the only concern, but knowing he had the tenth, had plenty of time to get ready, get loose. As Ron mentioned, he's done it before prior to his exodus to Japan, where he became a starter full time. This is his first relief appearance since 2 2 Ortega lines one to right field Edmund is right there for the out. He hit it sharply but Edmund runs it down. Two well hit balls but two outs for Miles Michaelis in the 10th. Four seam fastball from Michaelis right down the middle. And up in the zone, good swing by Ortega. Edmund in the right spot, or seems like he's always in the right spot. Julio Tehran started, left off the postseason roster, then added after game one the injury to Chris Martin. He's getting ready. Ah! And takes a hook for a strike. Cardinal pitching has retired nine of the last ten Braves. Started with that fly ball out in the seventh inning with the bases loaded. McCann in the air to right. Edmund is over. Edmund makes the play in fair territory. Three up, three down, three fly ball outs for Miles Michaelis. Cardinals coming to bat. Bottom of the tenth in a 4 4 game. What a division series this has been. Storied franchises from the National League, the Braves and the Cardinals. And Julio Tehran added to the roster after Chris Martin was injured, warming up to enter the game in game one. Tehran, Brian Snicker said it was the most difficult decision he had to make to leave him off the roster. Funny how it works out. Not only is he back on the roster, He's pitching in a 4-4 game in the 10th inning. Well, one of the reasons he was originally left off the roster in his last three starts, he gave up 15 runs and five home runs. That was a 12-start stretch for Tehran. Had a sub-3 ERA. Was one of the best pitchers going in the National League during that stretch. And which Tehran are you going to get is the question Braves fans are asking. He'll face Colton Wong to start it. Long Goldschmidt and Ozuna do up. Cardinals are a swing away from sending, sending this series to Atlanta. Long is 0 for 4 with three strikeouts today. He grounded out in the eighth inning. 
His last at bat. Shane Green, an impressive effort for the Atlanta Braves. Getting through an inning in two thirds. He did give up the tying run. There's Wong down the line. That is going to be a fair ball. It bounces out. It's a ground roll double for Colton Wong. A shot to the opposite field. And the Cardinals again put the winning run in scoring position. Finally, the Cardinals get a hit from their first two positions in the batting order. Fastball away, Wong going that way, and one hop into the stands. Fowler and Wong had been 0 for 9 until that double. But intentionally walk Paul Goldschmidt. One run wins it. Braves now give themselves a chance to set up a double play. And Brian says Snicker has no choice but to have a matchup here with Tehran and the Cardinals hottest hitter Marcelo Zuna the number one and number two hole in the batting order for the Cardinals have been 0 for 23 look at the numbers Ozuna versus Tehran nine runs batted in against Tehran as well and 48 career at bats. Wong normally one of the fastest players hampered by a hamstring injury first and second nobody out in a 4 4 game of the 10th and Tehran misses away to Ozuna Mark Melanson a spectator in this one. First appearance of this NLDS for Tehran as he slings one ah. in for a strike. Three quarter delivery right yes. on the outside corner. You're in the part of the game where the starters are your relievers. Miles Michaelis worked a three up, three down inning in the top of the tenth. Cardinals could be a base hit away from winning this game four. Here's a 1 1. Ozuna breaks his bat. Tehran gloves it, goes to second. Out there, throw it a first and safe. Ooh. High risk, high reward. Tehran just let the instincts take over. He throws that ball in the outfield. This game's over. Listen, he's always been one of the best feeling pitchers in the game. Knew exactly what he wanted to do with that ball as soon as he got it. Got the force out at second and almost turned two. Had no play at third because Donaldson was following the ball himself. Only way you can make that play is if you know what to do with it when it's hit to you and just barely beat the throw. Did Ozuna. Ozuna reaches on a fielder's choice. And here is Yadier Molina. He is the reason we are still playing right now. Two outs. In the eighth inning, had an RBI single to tie the game at four. Always ready to swing at the first pitch. Molina ambushed Shane Green. And a ball that left the bat at 63 miles an hour finds a hole. And the game is tied at four at that point. And you know he's ready to pull the trigger right here. Ready to pull the trigger. Loves to in RBI situations hit the ball to right field. Slowest runner the Cardinals have. Therefore, the Braves are going to take a chance to turn a double play to send this one to the 11th on a ground ball. Tehran deals. Molina in the air. Left field. Duvall's got a great arm, but that is deep. Wong ready to run. He tags. Here he comes. Duvall's throw. No chance. And the Cardinals have won game four.
When the Cardinals need a moment, they look to Yadier Molina. Not once, but twice in this game. He gets the game tying hit and then gets a fastball up in the strike zone and hit it deep enough to score Colton Wong. Phenomenal game four. Phenomenal series. <laughs> Fire that bat, Yachty. We're going to a game five, partner. This is something Beautiful. special. Game five at Atlanta Wednesday. Nationals Dodgers are underway in Washington, D.C. And we are headed there next. Ernie Johnson, Jeff Francoeur, Alex Chappell will have the call. We will play on in this magical division series as Yadier Molina ties it, then wins it with a walk off the eighth of his career. Thanks to producer Jeff Randolph, director Matt Lip. For Lauren Shahadi and Ron Darling, I'm Brian Anderson. For the rest of our terrific crew, we're ready to keep this going. What a party we've got going. Baseball, gotta love it. Let's send it to the National League Division Series. Game four in D.C. Ernie Johnson, take it away.